Day. I'm doing I'm doing pretty good if I so say if I do say so myself even though yesterday's stream was a little scuff because I had echo on for like two hours <laughs> and nobody told me <laughs> but it's okay it happens <laughs> I knew scuff was gonna happen so you know it was just inevitable <laughs> But yes, how is everybody doing? Hello, Rocket Time, hello, Crimson, hello, Lori. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you here. <laughs> oh, um, before we get started, I want to show you guys. I oh, So so I, I commissioned a skeb um, back in like February because I had a lot of extra money. So I was like, I'm going to treat myself. And I finally got it in today. <laughs> Let me just, let me just scoot over preemptively so that way you guys can see. But look at it! Look at it! It's so cute! <laughs> I just, I just got it yesterday! Or not, this morning, rather. <laughs> and I was just, it's so cute! It's so cute! They gave me, they gave me some opai, but I mean, it's still cute. <laughs> it's like, I didn't expect that, but it's like, it's very cute. It's. It's like my second most favorite commission now. <laughs> and another thing is that I didn't expect them to have more than one piece. Because there was also this one. This one's smaller, but it's so cute. <laughs> Let me make it bigger. It's so cute. <laughs> um, the artist is... Let me go ahead and copy and paste their name. Oh, thank you for resubbing Rocket Time. <laughs> But this is the the name of the artist on Skeb, uh, Eda Noma Meu. They they are they are pretty spendy, so it is definitely a treat yourself kind of commission. But I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh yes, I'm holding <laughs> I'm holding heat pads in my shirt. It's fine. I'm just a little cold, <laughs> but it's still very cute. 
Okay. Now that I now that I have shared that, now I can get ready to <laughs> open up Higurashi. <laughs> but eh, 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 I inhaled some spit. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm very I'm very glad that it finally came in. <laughs> it was it was definitely worth the wait. Okay, I'm gonna get everything scooted around. But yeah, I I wasn't expecting the second art piece. It was very it was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see, okay, okay, OBS. There we go. <laughs> and now we go over here into the little corner. <laughs> oh yeah, at least I wasn't muted for four hours. I would I would sure hope somebody would tell me if I was muted, <laughs> especially for a visual novel. Okay, I'll see. We get to continue. And so now, now Rena won't be as echoey. <laughs> <sighs> the store where my father ordered the jackets from is a fancy boutique. It's hard to believe my father would shop at a store like this on his own. I could tell right away that Rena san took him here. I handed over his, rece his receipt to the cashier. A short time later, the store manager came out wearing a perplexed look. Ryugu-sama, I am very sorry, but it seems like the truck carrying your jackets is stuck in traffic. It should be here soon, though. He said that the driver called a while ago, told him they just got off the highway and would be there in about an hour. I didn't need to know all the details, but he explained them to me anyway. I asked him if I should come back tomorrow. He insisted that I should wait because the truck would be short, be coming shortly, and he urged me to take a seat on the sofa. But I didn't really feel comfortable waiting there, so I told him I'd be back soon and left the store. I wondered if there were any fast food restaurants nearby. I might have to go all the way back to the station. I looked around and found a coffee house. The glass on the door was black, so I couldn't see inside. But there was a poster saying the price for a cup of tea is lower than normal for women on weekdays. I'd just be going to get a cup of tea to kill time. It should be okay. But still, I hesitated to go inside before opening the door. Her first, her first impression of the coffee house was the smell of cigarettes. It's normal for coffee houses to be filled with cigarette smoke. It's like a requirement. But Rena still regretted her decision. While she was thinking about leaving, the proprietor spoke to her brusquely and showed her to her table. Rena gave up on the idea of leaving and sat down. Is this the first time we have... Like, is this a random character, or is this the first time we have, like, a narrator as opposed to a character? Very interesting. The atmosphere in the shop was far from a clean, normal coffee shop where you would go to simply enjoy coffee and cigarettes. It was more like a place where vulgar people would hang around. Rana didn't feel comfortable at all, but what bothered her most was the laughter of a man and woman sitting together at the very back of the shop. Her table was behind a planter, so depending on how one looked at it, one could say she was in the, sp in the spot most protected from their laughter. But Rena looked as though she wanted to leave as soon as she finished her tea. The bell hanging from the entrance door rang, letting her know a customer just came in. It was a little surprising for her that a coffee shop like this could draw in so many customers. Rena peeked at the newcomers from behind the planter. There were two of them. They looked like vulgar men, the kind of people you didn't want to get involved with the instant you saw them. The proprietor tried to show them to a table, but they ignored him and walked towards the back. Yeah, this is the narrator, but the, it's interesting. This is the first time there's been just a narrator and not a character's inner thoughts. They walked up to the couple who had been laughing loudly and greeted them with a bow. Hey, you finally made it. Sit down. The couple stopped laughing, and the man told the newcomers to sit down in a threatening tone of voice. As instructed, the two of them took a seat. So, what happened? We're very sorry. We tried to cut it, dipshit. Just hand it over. The two of them looked at each other before they took each, each took an envelope out of their pockets and put it on the table. The man roughly grabbed the two envelopes and tore one of them open. Inside, there were many wrinkled 10,000 yen bills bound up in a bundle of the rubber band. He opened the other one to make sure it also had cash in it and threw it to the woman. Count them. Hey, don't order me around. This is originally my money, you know. Shut up. Just count them. The man yelled at the woman. He licked her. She licked her thumb, looking annoyed, and started counting the cash expertly. The two newcomers hung their heads while she counted. Lighting a cigarette, a man waited for her to finish counting. Good. It's all here, the woman said that after flicking through the last bill. The newcomers looked relieved. 
The man, however, didn't look satisfied as he star stared at the bundle of bills the woman was holding. Ritsuko. How much is there? What? I told you, it's all here. I'm asking you, how much is that? I told you, all the money I lent them. No, idiot. I'm asking you if you paid the interest. The man and Ritsuko yelled at each other. Even though they were making all the noise, the, cus the other customers acted like they didn't hear anything. This is the first time I've heard you swear without censoring yourself. Well, I mean, I won't say but like, you know, if if I'm if I'm reading, I'll I'll usually say the other stuff. But but if it has in the list, then I won't say. Hey boys, there's only two mil in here. What's going on? The two of them were trying to find some excuses to make. It seemed like this behavior had touched the man's nerves as he started looking furious. The is this? <laughs> <laughs> the explosion threw me off. <laughs> I asked you, what's going on? You better start talking. His angry voice echoed through the shop. He hit the table hard and dropped a glass on the floor. The noise thickened the tension in the atmosphere. Oh, we are very sorry. Being sorry doesn't give her the interest, does it? I don't mind calling the police to solve our problem, you know. B -b please don't. The two newcomers must have been in an extremely vulnerable position. They bowed so deeply that their foreheads almost touched the table. I called y'all here because I thought you wouldn't want me to involve the police. But then you act like you don't care, huh? We're sorry. We're very sorry. While we could pity them, the newcomers looked as vulgar as the man threatening them, making it hard to decide whether you should feel sorry for them or not. Hey, thank you. <laughs> After a while, Ritsuko opened her mouth as if to offer them help. Oh, right. Her name, her name was Ritsuko. Tacha, don't be so mean to them. I'm sorry. My guy gets mad easily when money's involved. Oh god, it's him! Oh no, I forgot! I forgot! Oh no. You don't have to add the money part. <laughs> I'm getting ticked because of Bishin Asha. Jeez, this, saying those stupid things won't get you anything. Hmm. <laughs> what the f is up, Kyle? No, see. <laughs> the man pulled Ritsuko roughly into his arms and frantically kissed her lips without caring about the other customers. Their kiss wasn't like the lovely ones that other cu that normal couples would share. It looked obscene instead. He let her lips go to take a breath, kissed them again, and repeated that for a while. That that is disgusting. <laughs> After a while, he finally got bored of kissing and let her go. He gets really mad when it comes to me, too. He's impossible. So what? This woman's like a part of my body. <laughs> putting dirt on her means putting dirt on me. Whoever tries to do that is in for a bloodbath. <laughs> do you really rem do you remember the guy with the comb over? I forgot what you did to that guy after you took him outside. Oh, right. She was the she was the corpse at the beginning of, of that one chapter. <laughs> I'm remembering. He challenged me and wanted to take it outside. He said he did karate, so I got a little excited to see what he had, and I punched him in the stomach. But then he just kneeled down on the ground. I was disappointed, but I took so I took off his pants and underwear and made him clean the public toilets with them. See, I'm helping society. I deserve an award for that one. I can't believe you made him do that. You're so gross sometimes. <laughs> They started laughing loudly like they were doing earlier. Their laughter obviously intimidated their companions. Listen, you two. Tetchan is actually in a very good mood today. Usually he'd start yelling, this ain't enough money, and you'd be thrown into the OG River naked by now. We truly apologize for the inconvenience. Well, you forgot about the interest, but you did put together all the rest of the money in time. I'm impressed. So I'll be nice and take that into consideration, you know? Anyway, his interest rate is a little high, but it's only five if you pay it today. If you wait even a day longer, it'd be doubled. And that, if it's doubled, I don't think you'll be able to pay it no matter what you do. So, I'm going to make you a deal. Techan, would you give us a minute? Right, right. Feed him to the fish. Feed both of them to the fish. <laughs> sure, I guess it's okay. The man left the table with a grin and headed for the bathroom. He was far too amenable to that request, as if they had planned for him to leave the table at that moment. Ritsuko made sure she, he was in the bathroom, then took some papers out of her bag and spread them on the table. You're young. You don't want to ruin your life because of an outlaw like him, do you? 
so I recommend you pay all the interest today. If you do, you can cut your ties with him. We, we understand that, but, but we can't get 500,000 yen just like that. That is a lot of money. I understand. I bet you tried really hard to collect that 2 million yen. I understand there's no one who'd help you out with another 500,000. They must have done their very best to collect even the money they brought today. So it must be impossible for them to collect even a dime from anybody now. They hung their heads and told her that. However, take a look. I made this for you. Uh. The guys looked at the paper on the table and muttered under their breaths. You don't need collateral or a joint grant for this, so the interest rate is a bit high. But with this, you can take out a loan of 500,000 yen right away. Even this interest rate is a lot better than Tetan's. What do you think? It would be easy for anyone to guess what Ritsuko was trying to force them to do. If you show him this with your signature on it, I'm sure he'll let you off. It's your choice, though. If you need a pen, you can use mine. Here. They read the small print on the documents, and they were stunned by the outrageous interest rate. Ritsuko didn't force them to do anything. She just looked at the window and smoked her cigarette. After a while, the man returned from the bathroom. Hey, did you come to the agreement? They looked at him, steeled themselves, and took the pen. They're going to borrow money to pay your interest. It's only 500,000 yen, so they can pay their debt soon if they work really hard. That's great. I'm impressed. Men get tougher when they have something burdening them. They must have planned this from the very beginning. The man and Ritsuko got what they wanted and grinned at each other. Now the girl is fine, but she's the type that hides behind the man that you get the root of the man. She's completely powerless. That's true. That's true. If Tetchen wasn't there, she probably, she probably wouldn't be doing much. There were many, many things to fill out on the documents, and it was taking them a long time. The man and Ritsuko, already knowing that, started talking amongst themselves. Ritsuko, how's your husband and Hina Mizawa doing? What? He's not my husband. What's going on with him? I heard he has a lot of money. How much do you think you can squeeze out of him? Well, you'd be surprised. I heard his ex-wife gave him a settlement when they divorced, right? But I just found out that she gave him a lot. How much is a lot? He was about 50 million yen in the bank. He's a big spender. Wow, that's real big. So, how much do you think you can squeeze out of him? He has a big crush on me. He buys me anything I want. Anything. He's not cheap like you. I might get serious about him. I don't think so. Your body won't be satisfied with anyone but me. <laughs> Stop it. Not here. Disgusting. So, what's the plan? I'm thinking about telling him I need some money to get rid of my ex-boyfriend. How much are you going to ask him for? She whispers into his ear. <laughs> You're a scary woman. Let me know if you need an actor for your play. I'll be your scary ex-boyfriend. Um, excuse me. We finished. Great. Then let's bring it over to the loan company. Or, uh, let's bring it over to the loan company. Risiko, take care of the check, would ya? The man pat them on the shoulders and then walked to the door. <laughs> yeah, she's a low shark swimmer swimming too, yes. You know, she's, she's gonna be doing something other than swimming here soon. <laughs> Another person was just about to enter, and they nearly ran into each other. The man probably wouldn't make way for the person, considering his personality. But when he noticed who the person was, he stepped aside. The person looked as vulgar as all the other men. He was wearing a black suit with sunglasses on. He wasn't that big, but his stern look was very intimidating. It was clear at a glance that he was a gangster, and a professional one at that. <gasps> is this... is this... Shion's friend? I can't, I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> the man who was behaving badly earlier looked a little nervous in front of him. As Ritsuko finished paying the check, she noticed the man in the suit. Oh, general manager? G good morning, sir. Oh, maybe it's not him. The man in the suit said nothing. He just raised his chin as if to say, P off. Ritsuko and the others bowed to him and left the shop in a hurry. The proprietor noticed the man in the suit, also greeting him with a bow. Who could he have been? He appeared, he appeared sedate, I guess. He appeared sedate compared to the other men, but he must be dangerous because he even made them step aside. Everybody in the shop thought the same thing and tried not to look at him. The man in the suit looked around and found the menu on the wall. The proprietor walked up to him hesitantly. Hey, waiter. Y yes? I is anything bothering you, sir? Do you have this? Seasonal dessert? S 
sweet something or other today? Huh? Oh! <laughs> no, actually, we aren't running that today, but... Well, if you insisted, then we could make it specially for you. If you're not selling it, you're not selling it. I'll come back some other day. It is! It is Kaosai! <laughs> I'm gonna lurk because I need to catch up with the beginning of the game. Okay, fair enough, Lori. <laughs> hey, Kaosai. He said he'd make it for you. Take his offer. We, can, we came all the way here. The girl seemed to be the only one who couldn't read the heavy atmosphere at the shop, and she came in laughing cheerfully. It was Mion Sonazaki's twin sister, Shion. Shion pushed Kasai into the store while he hesitated. She looked at a girl who was sitting down and stopped in her tracks. Huh? Oh, it's you! Hello, Rana-san. How are you doing? Eh? Oh, Sita? I'm surprised to see you here. Huh? Are you here by yourself? You waiting for someone? Is it Sidmysis? Or maybe, could it be Kei-chan? <laughs> Hi, Moki! How are you doing today? Oh, Chi-chan, who is this? Hmm? Are you talking about Kasai here? He's like my bodyguard. He'll protect me when my life is in danger, won't you? Er, won't you? Hey, howdy! <laughs> I'll give my life for your sake. If that's what you want me to do. I, for I forget if I gave Kasai a specific voice. Wow, Kasai, if you weren't tw if you were 20 years younger, I might have fallen for you. He looks scary, but he's a very funny guy. This is Rana Ryuku-san. She's Sis's friend. My name is Kasai. Nice to meet you. Um, Kasai-san, do you know the people who just walked past you? Kasai nodded, indicating that he was familiar with them. Who are they? I've never seen them before. The man is Tepe Hojo. A skunk of a human being. That is putting it lightly. <laughs> Shion seemed to know who he was once, he, once she heard the name Hojo. And the woman? Rina Mamiya. I heard that's her business name. Her real name is Ritsuko Mamiya, I think. She's a hostess at Flower Road. Kasai-san, do you know what he is to her? They look like a couple to me. Hojo is Rina's pimp. They're very, very bad people, so you should never get involved with them. How bad are they? Rena pressed him for the answer, and Kasai seemed to back down for a little from that pressure. It's more courteous to stay out of a woman's pr private affairs. How bad are they? Please don't ask. How bad are they? Rena, Rena kept asking the same question until she got an answer. She owns sensed how desperate Rena was and cut into the conversation. There's a pair of twins that works at a local McDonald's. One works the pay window and the other gives cover the, gives cover the other one. Huh. Oh, are, are, are you saying Angel Mort is McDonald's? <laughs> or is this like an actual situation? <laughs> Kasai, why don't you just tell her? I don't think she's asking out of curiosity. Am I right, Irena-san? There was a tension developing between Nerana and Kasai. Shion seemed to be the only one who couldn't read the mood. Kasai finally opened his mouth. They're both skunks, really. I've heard that they make a living by gambling and blackmailing people. I've also heard that they set up badger games. <laughs> they take an order from a girl and then get their order from an identical girl 30 feet away. <laughs> I feel like that would be fun to, like, mess with people. If I had a twin, I would just be like, yeah. <laughs> What's a badger game? <laughs> well, a badger game is like a marriage fraud. The woman finds a catch, the, a man who has money, and begins a relationship with him. Then, her boyfriend shows up and catches them in the act, blames the guy for stealing his girlfriend, and then blackmails him for money. First, the woman makes him buy expensive stuff for her, and then she and her boyfriend take all of his money. There's a rumor that she's got herself a big catch recently. Wow. Whoever that is, I'm so sorry for him. Well, <laughs> the guy had some fun with her, too. I guess he gets what he deserves. It's a little harsh, Sion-san. A man sometimes falls for a woman very easily. Yes, this is an actual... You went to high school with these twins? Oh, man, they sound so fun. <laughs> Oh, really? I wonder whom you fell for. Waiter, bring the dessert to us, please. Wait, 
Where did she go? She just took her leave. Rena was already gone. The door, which had just closed, looked as if it was the only thing that knew where she went. When I got home, the door was locked. I used my key to get in, and I found a note in the living room. Something's come up, so I have to go. I'm going to eat out tonight, is what the note said. This wasn't the first time he had done something like this. Each time, he only told me that he had to go to Okinomiya for something, but I knew the real reason, because I heard him talking on the phone once. Rina-san must have had some free time between jobs and asked him out to din have dinner together. I heaved a sigh. I looked at the new living room I hated and went to my room. I thought back over what I had just heard at the coffee house. I tried to rationalize the meaning of her actions there. Maybe she had pretended to be a bad person because she was being threatened by the man, but... Even after the man she called Tetchan left the table, she continued to threaten the guys and push them into signing the loan contract immediately. If she was threatened to, to play along with the man, she wouldn't have done that. If she was pretending to be a bad person, she could have shown a little bit of mercy or sympathy when he left her alone with them. If I had a twin, my poor other would have to raise two of me plus my brother. Oh no. Oh, that's true. Gosh, I think if I actually had a twin, that would be wild. <laughs> We we would cause mischief, I think. At, le at least that's what I would think. I don't know. I don't have any siblings, so I don't have any basis. <laughs> it's like holding water in a bowl you made with your hands. No matter how sturdy you made the bowl, water would leak from your fingers. Mercy and sympathy leak out from you. But nothing. Not even a drop of water leaked from Rina-san. Her hands weren't even moist. They were all dried up. There was no water that could leak through those hands. Rina-san was threatening those guys as much as the man was. Neither was leading the other along. They were doing it together. Those twins are genetically pretty different from each other in terms of interest and stuff. Oh! Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I guess most of... I don't think I knew twins in real life, so all of my twin experience was just from, like, media. <laughs> that was it. Rina-san is... A bad person. My brain cells accepted the idea with applause. After all, I always hated Rina-san. I just couldn't accept the feelings because my father liked her. But at that moment, I could finally accept it. She's a bad person just like my mother. She's in an existence that will ruin everything and destroy my father's happiness just by being with him. But I wonder if my father would understand that Rina-san is a bad person if I told him so. I've met a couple who was really good friends with a pair of Oh, your nieces are- all right! I think I remember you saying that once or twice. They hate it when they're treated as a pair and stop being individual people because so many people- Yeah. I- I- I, I understand that. <laughs> I- I would- I would- I would, I guess, understand. <laughs> Maybe? No? I don't know. I don't know how to- <laughs> I don't know how to talk sometimes. <laughs> My father likes her so much that he would jump over a cliff if he- if she asked him to. He thinks everything she does and says is great, and he interprets everything about her in a positive way. He protects her and praises her without her asking him to. I'm not a kid anymore. I understand how a woman can tame a man. It's different from love. Love is about trying to build a relationship. Taming is just a way of satisfying the lust to dominate. She's just trying to make him into her slave. Oh. <laughs> Women can deceive men, even my father. They can use dirty methods to ensnare men like they're following a manual. It's the weak point all men are born with. Even with a strong will, they can't resist it. That's why we hate those women who exploit the weak point to deceive men. That's why I couldn't bring myself to like Rina-san. Yeah, that's... That's some... Yeah, that's... That, I mean... That, this was written in, like, what? Early 2000s? Late 90s? <laughs> I don't remember when this was written. I inherited probably early 2000s and all the medical problems of the family so even if my twin was healthier than I would he would still have some problems yeah that would make sense for the sake of argument let's assume that I acknowledged an unreciprocated love like that but that would only be as long as it was love if it wasn't love it was just a method of, thre of to threaten and squeeze money out of him I would never forgive her I remember their conversation at the coffee house. Rina-san said that my father is a big spender. In fact, I think he spends more on money without hesitation than before he met Rina-san. 
I was happy that he started to regain an interest in going out into the world again, but now I don't know whether I should be happy or not. He controls the money of the Ryugu family after overall, but since I do the grocery shopping, he often gives me his bank book so that I can withdraw money. Because of that, I know where he keeps his bank book, his personal seal, and other important stuff. But more importantly, obviously written by a man, yeah. They're in one of his drawers, which he, always, which he usually locks. I know he, where he hides the key, and I know the combination of the cash box inside the drawer. He might be coming back soon, so I felt a little nervous. But I had to make sure. I opened the cash box, which had some bank books, per personal steals, stamps, un unused postcards. I removed everything from the cash box to get at the bank books, then I found something new. On the bottom of the box, there was a bundle of new 10,000 yen bills. Its thickness wasn't something I could ignore. There was also a paper wrapper that looked like it had been bu bunding the bills. Bundling, rather. The wrapper had a stamp that said it was a bundle of a million yen. He usually kept some cash at home because it was troublesome to go to the bank every time he needed it with money. But it was usually around 100,000 to 200,000 yen at most. He's never kept such a big amount of money at home before because he knows it's unsafe. The extraordinary amount of 10,000 yen bills was abnormally intimidating. I tried to open the bank book, but my fingers got numb all of a sudden. Part of me was trying to deny the things I heard at the coffee house. It wasn't because I wanted to defend my father or even Nina-san. It was because I didn't want to believe my father was the husband in Hinamizawa the blackmailers were talking about. I opened the bank book. The last time I saw it was about two or three months ago. It shows countless withdrawals since that day. I probably wouldn't normally understand what those numbers meant, but I felt in that moment that if the ten different digits were speaking to me, they were a series of cruel digits. It starts with some un understandable expenses that I assume represent dinners or something, but then the amount of money starts to become nice round numbers, like a five or a ten. I can tell by looking at the dates he withdrew money that he wanted to have a certain amount of cash on hand when he went out with Rinesan. Among those expenses, a big number appeared all of a sudden. It was too much money to spend on a date, hundreds of thousands of yen. I looked at the date of the withdrawal and traced it back in my memory. I remembered. Around that time, Urina-san was talking about moving into a new apartment. I know the market rate of rental apartments in Okinomiya. You need to put down two safety deposits and two payments of key money in order to rent an apartment. That amount of withdrawal sounded reasonable now. He paid the whole down payment for her new apartment. Oh. So like, this is, yeah, this is the, this is about the pink lady. After all, big numbers appeared one after another. I could tell that they were for congratulatory gifts for her new apartment or something. The numbers got bigger and bigger. It looked like at first he was drawing only the amount of money needed, but then he started withdrawing big amounts all at once because he knew he was going to use it someday anyway. The change meant only one thing. He lost his sense of the value of money. The balance kept going down, and I started feeling anxious about what's going to happen if he continued spending money like that. But then, I saw a deposit of a big amount of money into the account. Where did that money come from? There was only one thing I could think of. I opened the other bank book. 1990s to 2005 is the estimated time period where the game could have been written. I'm going off references to common belief that they were pro more prone back then. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. That, that that makes sense for the writing. <laughs> it was easy, like a puzzle for kids. It was like playing with an easy jigsaw puzzle that comes with huge pieces that you don't even have to put together to see what the whole picture looks like. My father was using money from his time deposits. In other words, the settlement my mother paid my father when she divorced him. To him, it's cursed money. I'd understand if he wanted to use it to get a new love. But... That was just an excuse to use the money from his time deposits. Money is money. Even though it's his divorce ceremony, it's still important money for our future. Even though it's cursed money to him, it doesn't mean he can waste it. Big expenses start appearing one after another. There are many expenses, upwards of six digits. For some reason, I could immediately tell that they were buying electronic appliances and furniture. He must have been buying everything she asked him to. If. From the beginning, Rina-san was only seeing to check if he could end up being a big catch. She must have been trying to find out how much money she could squeeze out of him. And my father bought her anything she wanted, no matter how expensive it was, so she probably thinks of him as a perfect catch now. The numbers in the bank book told me so. 
The simple numbers and dates on the bank book had started talking to me. Around the time he started withdrawing big amounts of money, Rina-san started coming to the house more often, and she also started spending the night. To Rina-san, my father was at first just a guy who spends big money, but around that time she landed her big catch. My father used to refer to her as my friend in Okinomiya at first, but he started referring to her as Rina-san around that time. This is particularly his fault, or partially, probably? But he was betrayed by his beloved wife, and he was feeling hurt and down for a long time. It's also partially my fault. That's why I didn't want to blame him. And he's not that good looking either. There's no way he's immune to women. He must have not been able to resist an attractive lady who aggressively approached him when he was feeling down. He's crazy about Rina-san, so he can see something other than her. Or so he can see nothing. Bleh. I can't blame him, because Rina-san trained him to be that way. I put the bank books and the other things back into the cash box. This cash box is just like my father's heart. Rina-san is eating up the contents. What should I do? Think, Renaryugu. Should I tell him about Rina's scheme? No, that probably wouldn't do anything. The whole point of taming an animal is that it won't run away from its owner even when the door is wide open. My father probably won't leave his cage even if I open the door. Like having hard cash on you so you don't have to go to the bank when you have to pay for something that means that it's easy for dirty money or this takes place before debit cards were widely adopted. Probably dirty money. Yeah. <laughs> Should I confront Nina san about her plot when, when he's with her? I mean, they probably, because they probably wrote checks, so it was probably a little bit of both, but mainly dirty money. Because the game takes place in, like, 80s? Like, late 80s, I think? Or somewhere around there? The results would be the same. Or wait, did I say the first line? I don't know. Should I confront Lydia san about our plot when he's with her? The results would be the same. Lydia san would run behind his back. He'd probably try to protect her. If she pressed her breast against his back, he'd protect her no matter what. I couldn't make this a problem between me and him. First of all, I was trying to get rid of Rina san for his sake. If we got mad at each other, it would give the advantage to Rina-san. It would be like I was putting myself into her trap. Then... that meant... I couldn't make him do anything. If I couldn't make him break up with Rina-san, I'd have to talk to Rina-san directly. So, instead of making my father fight, I'd have to fight in his place. But how? That guy, Kasai-san, who was with Shi-chan today, seemed to know the man Rina-san was with. I wonder if I can somehow meet him again. He looked scary. But I was introduced to him as a friend of Mi-chan. Mi-chan has a lot of power around here. There's no way he would treat me badly. I wonder if he could tell Rina-san and the man to back off my father. That helped me a lot. But I didn't know how I could meet him again. I could ask Mi-chan for help, but I don't want her to know my situation. This is a problem with the Ryugu family. This is nobody's business but mine. Yeah, this is a battle that I have to fight alone. I regretted my parents' divorce. I wept about the tragedy I could have prevented if I had tried. I wasn't going to weep this time. I wasn't going to let the chance slip away. This time, I would fight for my happiness. You get them, Rena. Beat them up. Make them meet you in, in the treasure area. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little step. From my very noisy water bottle. <laughs> Okay, what did the tips show us today? Property estimate. Dear Ritsuko Miyamiya, Mamiya-sama, Executive Housing Corporation. Take them on a scavenger hunt, right? <laughs> Go treasure hunting with her, it's fine. Attached estimate. We thank you for your past visits and inquiries to our office. We've included the estimate for the property you inquired about. The text is very slow in this tips. Basic information. Property name. Palace of Versailles? Room 707? Property code 14MI421. Property type. Modern con condominium. Layout. 2LDK. Address. Shishibone City. Koaicho. 2 Chrome. Transportation. Line. Gogura Station. 5 minutes on foot. Yeah, it is a very noisy water bottle. <laughs> 49,800,000 yen? 
Maintenance fee, 20,000 yen. I mean, it is a palace, so it's... Wow. <laughs> Other. South end corner room, elevator floor. Condominium fitness club membership included. Thank you for your interest in this property. The area around Gogura Station is a prime real estate zone for luxury condominiums, along with furniture planned to develop or future planned developments. The real estate values in and around Gogura Station are expected to rise, and this property is not an exception. As a result, many prospective buyers are interested in this property. Hence, we'd like for you to understand that the selection process for this property will be done via lottery. That seems like a common thing in Japan, like a lot of things are decided by lottery. Also, er, we also offer celebrity member prefer preferential treatment, granti granting highly improved chances through additional lottery entries. Would Please feel free to inquire about our agents for more details. Executive Housing Corporation, Celebrity Account Manager, Kawabata. Gonna lay down for a bit? Okay, see you later, Moki! We'll be here for the next, uh, like, hour, two and a half hours, if you come back. Have they made a reference to any idol groups? I don't, I don't think so. There, there were a few idol, or there were a few references to various things when they were in Angel Mort, but I, I mean, there was a, there was a Magical Girl reference, but I don't, I don't think they've referenced, like, an idol group. Okay, I'm just making- okay, I was making sure that I didn't have Echo on. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Kazai-san. He's Shion's watchdog. Her watchdog? Really? <laughs> yeah, he is. Shion tends to do crazy things, so she needs to have someone watch her all the time. I think you're as crazy as Shion. Keiji-kun- Keiji-kun cut into the conversation. They ended up making a lot of noise, teasing each other like they always do. Mion made it sound like that man, Kasai-san, is some sort of territory boss in Okinomiya. It wouldn't be easy for me to meet with him in person, but because she's Chi chens watchdog, I might be able to find a way. The problem, though, is that I don't have any connection to Chi chen either. We hang out every once in a while whenever she comes to Hinamizawa, but I've never called or visited her. I have no idea how we can meet. Even if I could meet Kasai-san, there's no guarantee that he'd help me. He seems like the kind of person who doesn't like the gossip about others. He told me about Rina-san at the coffee sh house only because Shi-chan pushed him to. Plus, the situation could grow worse very quickly while I waited for the chance to meet him, so any help he might offer could come too late. Remember, Kasai Kasai I remember Kasai-san told me that, as her next step, Rina-san usually uses her partner to threaten their catch. That would be significant- that would signify the end of her performance. They were going to take all of my father's money. I wasn't feeling a sense of crisis yet, but that time might be coming very soon. Idol groups are relatively new concept. Er, Nalu? I'm, I'm gonna assume you, you, you meant new? I'm not sure. In concert, concept in practice in Japan, I'm just trying to make a rough estimate of when. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's definitely a time where, like, magical girls existed, but I don't know. I don't know if idol groups were, like, that big of a thing back back in this time. Even, even as I was at school, taking a class peacefully, that man might already be at the house right at this moment, threatening my father to hand over his bank books. Once I become anxious, I get more and more anxious. I could feel a big pressure on my chest as if the ceiling had collapsed on me. Man, I'm so bored. My life is too peaceful. Keiji-kun talks to me, yawning. Is that so bad? I'd love to have a peaceful life that'd bore me. I don't. I wish some kind of big event would happen, like aliens coming to attack us or something. I'm not saying that I would like to have something like that happen every week, but at least at the end of every month or so, you know. Or maybe we can get trapped in a time loop. That, that would be fun. <laughs> oh, and that doesn't include our monthly test. If aliens really did come, destroyed the earth, and buried all of Hinamizawa, would you be satisfied? Would you? Magical girls have been wrong for a long, long time, yeah. No, that's not what I meant. I'm just saying that I want for some kind of excitement because I'm so bored. 
He had no idea of what I'd been going through, of course, and that's why he says that. But I was still irritated by his insensitivity. I couldn't understand why he wouldn't be satisfied with such a peaceful life. He never has to doubt that today or and tomorrow will be as fun as yesterday. I was all too aware that boring and peaceful days could be destroyed all of a sudden. I knew that boring and peaceful days could come to an end all of a sudden because your mom wanted to divorce your dad. I knew that you could feel like you didn't belong anywhere in your own house because your dad had gotten a new girlfriend. Even so, you had to repeat the same kind of day over and over again. That's why I want to live every day happily in order to be prepared when the world comes to its end. I wonder if, uh... I wonder if Rika feels a similar way. I'm jealous of you, you know? You look so happy all the time. I wish I had that kind of skill. You're jealous of me, huh? How do you do it? How do you live every day not being bored, but being happy? If it really is a skill, I'd love to learn how. <laughs> It's easy. All you need to do is to realize. Realize what? There's no way he could understand it. It was probably better that he didn't, because that meant he was truly happy. Katie's model is a bit weird. I'm not used to seeing him besides being a bodiless voice, right? This is the... Uh, I think... Well, the last chapter was the first time we saw his sprite. <laughs> you just need to realize that your happy days will one day come to an end. The three of us walked home from school like we always did. Mi Chan said goodbye to us at the corner of the street where she took her separate way home. She walked away, waving, but I chased after her. Mi Chan! Hmm? What? Mi Chan apparently thought she dropped something, and she looked around to see what she dropped. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to tell you. I saw Chi Chan and Kasai san yesterday at the coffee house. And I picked up something that kasai san dropped while he was there. Of course he hadn't dropped anything. I was lying. If I could meet him, I'd just show him whatever. Tell him that I thought... Tell him I thought it was his and apologize for my mistake. Oh, well, thank you then. I'll send it over to him in that case. Uh, uh I'd like to give it back to him in person. Eh? Mi-chan looked surprised. I couldn't blame her. I had met him only once. It's weird to want something back in person, or want to give something back in person to someone you barely know. Well, that's alright, but why? Uh, uh, he had this cute beard and those cute sunglasses. I'm so crazy about cute things. Uh, could I fudge my true intentions with my cute mode? I tried it anyway. Michan usually takes words at their face value, and indeed she seemed to buy it. Every day is the Persian Hina Misawa, well, yeah. Remember Mosh Pit rules, you, you're there to have fun and help others, even if you're the one that bumped into them. Hey. <laughs> Please don't pull out his beard and take it home with you. So, do you think I can meet him? Well, I have no idea if he's busy or not. I'll ask him if he's coming to Hinamizawa next. Or when, rather. I needed to know when as soon as possible. Of course I wasn't going to say I wanted to meet him today, but at least tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What are you guys doing? Hmm? <laughs> it seems like Rena found a new love. No! <laughs> really? How interesting. I want to hear about it too. I didn't want her to leave it up in the air, so I told her... I think I should give it back to him as soon as possible. I'm sure he's looking for it, too. Michan said okay twice and walked away, waving. I hadn't yet thought about how I was going to ask for help when I met, meet him. He seems to be in a higher position than Narina-san and her partner. If he agreed to help me, it would be very encouraging. But there was a possibility that he'd tell me he didn't want to interfere in other people's private matters. He could just say the whole thing was another love triangle between a father, his daughter, and his lover. Bye, Rena. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I said goodbye to Keiichi-kun and walked home alone. After Keiichi-kun was gone, everything went quiet and my head became clear. What I needed at that moment was quiet time to think about what I should do from then on. I shouldn't depend on Kasai-san to solve my problem. He'd most likely decline my request and I'll have to think about some other alternatives. It's probably better that I just do that.
a love triangle between a father, his daughter, and his lover. Those words bothered me, because I've seen an unhappy triangle like that before. That sort of thing had happened to Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun experienced it last year. He fought for his sister in a triangle with his aunt. It was the same situation as mine. I'm trying to fight to protect my father. Satoshi-kun fought alone. Nobody helped him. All I did for him was give him my sympathy and compassion. I didn't think I could do anything more than that. I felt sorry for him, but I didn't really help him out. Irresponsibly, I tried to cheer him up, and I probably told him something that I thought would make him feel better, but that hurt him instead. I recently realized how much I hurt him with my insensitivity, because Keiichi got just hurt me the same way. I'm just going down the same path as Satoshi-kun went last year. I feel like I'm experiencing deja vu, an unusual repetition. <laughs> that would mean that I'd be the one who gets demoned away this year? I should be okay. I wasn't thinking about running away from Hinamizawa. Was I? I wasn't thinking about running away from Hinamizawa, but I thought about running away from my home many times. That's why I made the place I could escape to in the garbage dump. That dump happened to be in Hinamizawa. But what if it wasn't? Running there would be the same thing as running away from Hinamizawa. <laughs> I shouldn't think like that. Oyashiro-sama would get mad at me. Oyashiro-sama is really scary. I saw flickering lights in my head. Oh no. Every time I try to remember that time, my mind won't stop would stop working properly. I remembered the vivid colors of my psychoactive drugs. The flickering lights and clouds started spreading in my head. They were so bright and annoying. Don't try too hard to remember. Don't try too hard to remember. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I couldn't stop the flickering lights in my head. I couldn't have that feeling. I had to fill my heart with another feeling. Yeah, there was no time for those crazy flickering lights in my head. I had to think about what I should do when Kasai-san declines my request for help. I had to protect my father from Rina-san and that bad man. Wait, why was I still calling her that? Rina is Rina. Rina, Rina, Rina. She's a bad person who deceived my father and tried to bring us unhappiness. Bad people bring bad things into the world without even doing anything. They're different from the other 90% 90, 90 of people who aren't bad. If you let them loose, they'll, end, they'll even ruin the people around them. When you have one bad tangerine in a box, it spreads its, its fungus to the other tangerines out it, around it. It's what bad people are like. I couldn't remember what Satoshi-kun resolved his triangle last year. But, uh, but I could still see the flickering lights in my head. They're still flickering, they're still flickering, they're still flickering, they're still flickering, they're still flickering. They're still flickering. Just as the swirl of flickering lights were making me dizzy, I saw my house. I also saw Rina san's scooter parked by the side of the gate. The moment I saw the bike, the flickering lights disappeared, and I regained control of myself. Rina san spent the night last night. She told me she had to work today in the evening, so she should be leaving soon. But I didn't want to be around her, even for the little while, until she left. I said, I'm home, really loud, rushed into the house, pretended that my friends were waiting outside, and rushed out of the house. But Rina-san stopped me. Hey, Rina-san, you're home. Ah, uh, hello. This was the first time I thought Rina-san's smile was ugly. It only stood to reason. I had realized the scheme she was hiding behind the smile. Your father and I went to Golgira for lunch today. There's a, there's a restaurant that makes delicious Indian curry. My father poked his head out of the living room and he says, I want to go there again next time we go. I really liked the, that curry. I wonder if he meant with me next time or with me and her. Anyway, I hate it when the Rina-san says your father. We bought you some curry from the, from the restaurant. Try it later. It's very good. Have you heard of that restaurant, Rina-chan? I did know the restaurant she was talking about. I saw it in a magazine. It's a new restaurant that just opened recently. I also remembered that it was an expensive restaurant. The amount of money they spent on the take-home curry alone must have been enough to cover the cost of all our dinners for several nights. Since I was aware of what was in the bank books, it was hard for me to stay calm. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Rina-san. Reina-chan, your father and I would like to talk about something with you. I'm sorry, but my friends are waiting for me, so I have to go. Hello. We're going to get go treasure hunting at the garbage dump again. 
You really like treasure hunting, huh? I'd like to go there sometime. Well, I gotta go, bye! Every time Lena san moves her arms and head, the scent of her perfume struck my nostrils. I hate the smell of her perfume, so I couldn't stay there a second longer. I'm surprised at how bloody Higurashi can be. No one has threatened to, to outright murder anyone. Well, I mean, like, yeah. The, the closest anybody has really gotten is, like, in the friendly, haha, I'm gonna kill you, lol, but not really. <laughs> From, like, another chapter ago. I don't remember which one it was, but yeah, they were like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rip you apart, lol. <laughs> and it's just like, hmm. Wrong, wrong choice of words there, friendo. I rushed out of the house and started running to get away from her perfume. The rubber band inside me, the one called Arena, was stretched all the way to its limit. I'm pretty sure I'd explode. Whoops, I accidentally summoned my desk. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'd explode and go crazy if the rubber band broke. I didn't want to feel like that inside my own house. My house was supposed to be the place where I could, where I could open my heart freely. I ran away. I ran away from there. I ran farther and farther from there, because it was no longer a place I belonged. It's not that I had a destination in mind. It was just, I was just running away. I was running to escape to a place where I did belong. Didn't I decide to fight against that woman? Didn't I decide to fight against her either by myself or with my father? But then, once I saw her fake smile, a chill ran up my back. It was like I picked up a stone, found a carpet of bugs underneath it, and put it back on the ground in a hurry. I rushed out of the house as fast as I could. Did I want to fight, or did I want to run away? Was I just choosing to spend a peaceful time at my hideout, believing that tomorrow will be the same as today? I couldn't do that. I didn't know when they'd spring their trap. I couldn't afford to waste any time. I knew that, deep down. I knew that, but I just wanted to run away. I couldn't stop myself from running away. And so, I did run away. At times like this, the mattress in my hideout would feel so soft. That I knew. The cries of the Higarashi were soothing to the ears. They sounded as soft as my mattress. They were like music. They didn't force any feelings upon me. They cried as if to tell me, just be who I am. It was always so quiet here that I immediately noticed the purr of an engine coming closer. People used to come here and make a lot of noise during the dam conflict. But now, nobody really comes here. This is a place forgotten. So it was rare to see somebody come through here at all. I sat at the roof of the abandoned car and waited for the intruder to go away without looking their way. But the purr of the engine stopped. I'm not stupid. If it stopped, I knew exactly who it had to be. I heard the person calling me, but I ignored it once. The person came closer, making it harder for me to ignore her, and she called my name again. I turned around this time. Rina-san! 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 Are you hard of hearing? I'm sorry... I guess I couldn't hear you because of the wind. <laughs> she seemed to buy my poor excuse. She smiled and said, Yeah, it happens sometimes. Are you here alone? Where's your friend? I'm playing here alone. Well, it's rare for a girl your age to play alone. Rina-san stretched and looked across the huge garbage dump. I can't believe three people people throw away so much crap out here. Do you know there used to be a place where people threw tons of abandoned cars without wheels? It was near Hirasaka. I wasn't interested in Rina-san's old story, but I pretended to listen and nodded. She doesn't take this road to go back to Okinomiya. I guess she knew I'd be here and came by to see me. What did she want? It was obvious that she was trying to make conversation. She probably took it personally when I avoided her earlier, which must be why she was here to butter me up. It would be better for her not to have any conflicts with the daughter of the man she's seeing, no matter what the intention of seeing him is. In that sense, it was a responsible action for her to take. Speaking it out, I need to finish watching Higurashi and finish last period to see if they make any more Higurashi crossovers. Oh yeah, I watched I watched the clip. That was very interesting. <laughs> it's like I don't know anything about that anime that you that you shared that you tagged me in the clip for, but it's just like it seemed really interesting. <laughs> Like, it had, like, kind of the phone gotcha uh, elements to it, so it's like, that makes that makes sense with, like, random collab characters being there. <laughs> While I listened to her old story, all I could think about was when she was going to leave. Didn't I have to fight against her? Didn't I decide to fight against her? Didn't I find out her plot at the coffee house in Okinomiya? 
I didn't find out that this woman is squeezing money out of my father when I looked inside her cash box. I know who you are. Please leave my father alone. How easy would it be if those two sentences could solve the problem? She'd probably deny it. Even if I told her about what I heard at the coffee house, I have no evidence of her plot. If she said she did because the vulgar man was threatening her, there would be nothing I could do. But I know this woman is a bad person. I know something horrible will happen in the near future if I waste time like this. A strange, tense feeling started coming over me, but I didn't know how to let it out. As the feeling started running high, I became unable to stand the smell of her perfume. I wanted to put a certain distance between me and her, so I climbed down the slope of the scrap heap. I kept going down and down the slopes of the garbage dump. When I turned around, I saw her coming down as well, muttering. Was she following me? In order to run away from her, I started running down the slope all the way to the bottom, went around behind some trash piles, and arrived at the front of my hideout. My escape was meaningless. Not only was she going to catch up with me eventually, all I did was let her know the way to my hideout that nobody is supposed to know about. I wanted to make sure she never saw my precious hideout. I was about to leave, but then she appeared. Wow! This is cool! It's like a secret base! <laughs> this is my secret hideout! Nobody comes here and nobody can hear us! I felt strange hearing myself say that. So, this is your secret hideout, huh? <laughs> I'm honored to be invited here. She must have thought I told her my secret because she was worth sharing it with. She looked happy. She found the station wagon, looked inside of it through the window, and she went all ooh and ah excitedly. Last period is a Pokemon clone that 90% of the fights are fought through gotcha styled summons. Ooh, I see. That actually sounds kind of neat. This is a secret place that nobody else knows. I felt like my consciousness was separating from my body. Like I was floating. I don't know how to read this part. <laughs> but it didn't feel good. Like I was... Like when I drink... Am Amazake? What is Amazake? It was more like being carsick. I felt like I was going to throw up. My brain was probably secreting some chemical in order to avoid facing the reality that I'd have to stay with this woman, that I couldn't run away from her. But even if my brain tried to avoid recognizing it, the reality in front of me wouldn't change. Rena chan Yes? What's wrong? Are you feeling okay? Yes. I'm fine. I inhaled fresh air and pulled my consciousness back to reality. I didn't feel like throwing up anymore, but I still felt off balance. I leaned into the scrap of garbage to keep my balance. I like you, Rena chan Do you like me? <laughs> what are you talking about all of a sudden? I said that because I didn't want to say that I like her. I've been seeing your father for quite a long time now. We've been talking about many things, you know? I needed to stop feeling like this. Get up, Rena. I'd heard... I'd, 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 heard something like this before, a part of me trying to understand what this woman was trying to say, but another part of me was trying not to. I felt as if her words were bouncing around in my head, and I started having a headache. We had a serious talk about our future the other day, you know, about our life together and so on. What? You like Uncle Akihito, don't you, Rena? Or so your father and I. What's going on? Mother? What are you talking about, Renoryugu? This is an important moment. You're about to have a one-on-one -on -one battle with Rina-san. No. Mom, what about my dad? What about me? I don't want you to divorce him. I don't want you to get remarried to anybody else. No. Please don't divorce him. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you get remarried. I'm not going to let you get remarried, get married to my father. What? I don't care if you go out with him, but I'm not going to let you get married to my father. She must have not thought that I'd say it straight out like that. She looked stunned. After a while, she broke the silence with her laughter. <laughs> I thought you might reject me, but I didn't think you'd say it straight out like that. You thought I might reject you? I'm surprised you even noticed that I was doing it. Of course I did. You always ran away whenever you saw me. You thought I didn't know. That's why I hate kids. 
She frowned, revealing her ugly self. It should have been the first time I saw her face like that, but I wasn't surprised at all. Her face had looked like that to me from the beginning. I wanted to get along with you at first, uh, if I could, at least on the surface, but I guess it's hard to do that now since you hate me so much. What do you hate about me? I'd like to know for future reference. Everything. I hate everything about you. I hate your smell, too. One vicious word came out of my mouth after another. I didn't have wings, but I felt as if I was flying up into the sky. I felt weird and uncomfortable, but also exhilarated. Um, oh. I, ha I have a pers very personal history with gotcha games about five years ago. Had a ruled in a f had a rule in a fail gotcha game. Oh no! <laughs> I felt as if I was letting another me use my body. I was in the middle of a disastrous battlefield, but I felt like it wasn't even my business. Yeah, with gotcha games, like, uh, I've, I've been so disappointed in, like, using actual money in a lot of them, so most, most times I just use, like, the free gems, even though it takes a million years. <laughs> That's just fine with me, because I hate you too. I guess we're even. <laughs> you little f***ing brat, you better shut your f***ing out or I'll make you. Oh my gosh. Never come to my house again. I'll never let you get married to my father. <laughs> I don't need your permission, you know. Well, why don't you try and stop your father from remarrying? Let's see what happens. I think you're wasting your time, though. She didn't look intimidated by me at all, and that made me a little intimidated in return. Why was she so confident in her absolute control over my father? She had to have more than confidence to be able to act as fearless as this. She must have something tangible. Before I asked her what it was, she told me herself. I'm pregnant. You're lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's true. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a big lie! She has to divorce because she got pregnant. She has to get married because she got pregnant. That's a lie! That's a big lie! I'm a Christian, so I can't get an abortion. We'll just have to accept it. Plus, we had sex with marriage in mind. He made me pregnant. If he changes his mind and takes no responsibility, it's going to be a big mess, you know? That was your plan, wasn't it? I overheard it. I heard the conversation you had with that man, Tetan, at the coffee house. I know you started seeing my father for his money. I know you call him husband and he Mizawa. I know he's just a big catch for you. I know everything because I heard it from Kasai-san. I know you do badger games, too. Oh, you knew? Well, well, well. Before I knew it, Rina was standing right in front of me. We glared at each other with our faces almost touching. I was contracted to earn about 2% of profits because I voiced one of the main characters. Oh! Hmm. Oh, you had a roll and a failed gotcha game. I see, I see, okay. <laughs> that makes that makes more sense. <laughs> that's, that's... That's fun. Probably, well... 1% one, one not too good but you know better than nothing i guess i guess they were probably expecting to make a lot of money it's like oh yeah if like a bunch of people pull for your character you know you've got a bunch of books <laughs> i mean it's still impressive even though it failed yeah mm -hmm. it's very impressive to ha have a, like a, a role like that even if it didn't last too long so reina chan you know everything and what are you thinking you're going to do don't come near my father ever again. What if I refuse? You wanted to talk to me at your secret hideout, right? I kind of knew what you wanted to talk to me about. You brought me to your secret hideout where nobody knows and nobody can hear us, right? Yeah, you're right. Nobody knows about this place and nobody can hear us here. Nobody comes here because it's a place forgotten. Our, face, our faces were so close to each other that our noses could almost touch. I knew what I was talking about, but I didn't know what would happen next. I couldn't back down now that I have got to this point. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I should do. <laughs> Come on, let's not do this. Let's be friends again. Rina started laughing and slapped me on the back. My expression didn't change and I kept staring at Rina. But I didn't notice her real intention of putting both her arms around my neck. The tension broke and suddenly stretched thin or already stretched thin, and Rina squeezed my neck hard. I was openly hostile, but I didn't realize Rina's evil intention until she started choking me. Uh, 
<laughs> you little brat. I'm so close to getting millions of yen. If you at least pretended to get along with me, I would have given you a good allowance. But you just couldn't keep your mouth shut, can you? You got some nerve. A brat like you should die. I tried to pry her hands off my neck, but I didn't have the strength to do so. I didn't want to kill you, but I'll probably never get as big a catch as your father again. So I don't mind killing you for millions of yen. I was going to disappear after I got that money anyway. This is what you get for talking back to me. The world around me got darker and darker. I had never known an evil intention like this, namely the intent to kill me. It didn't scare me though. That's because being scared is a feeling that people use to express when they feel when they see wildfire on the other side of a river. People on the island in the wildfire with their deaths right in front of them. They don't get scared. If I loosened my grip on her hands just a little bit, she'd crush my throat. That was a simple competition to see who was stronger. Oh no! Rocket times into that. <laughs> Nina wanted to get into the most advantageous position, so she tried to push me down to the ground so she could mount me. If I let her do that, I wouldn't stand a chance. I tried to keep my current position, but I was losing a lot of energy by being choked. It was only a matter of time before Nina could push me down. I lost my balance on purpose. I tried to fall backward in order to pull her off balance. I couldn't hold my breath long enough to keep up that strength competition, so I had no choice but to take that chance. We fell on the ground, tangled together. But as Rina was strongly determined to kill me, she didn't even take her hands away from my neck after she fell. However, my action made Rina loosen her grip on my throat. It wasn't loose enough for me to break free from her grip, but it gave me a few moments to use my hands for something other than stopping her from crushing my throat. If I hadn't g taken the chance, I wouldn't... I would have been done for. That's why I tried to literally seize my chance. I moved both my hands on the ground. To seize that chance, I felt a piece of broken glass in my right hand. That was truly my chance to literally save myself from the brink of death. I cut Nina's wrist oh, deep with a piece of glass. Nina tried to endure the pain for a few seconds, but pain that severe from someone so cornered soon broke her will. She let go of my throat to cling to her bloody wrist. I used that moment to roll away from her. Ugh, it f***ing hurts. She screamed, both in pain and also to try to intimidate me again. It didn't work anymore, though. Intimidation only works on the opponent when the opponent is hesitant to fight. When you're already in a fight, screaming like that means nothing more than letting the opponent know how badly you're hurt. I no longer had any hesitation. I had learned from Nina. She taught me that I have to do what I have to do in a situation like this. That's right. This is my secret hideout. I know every single piece of junk in here. Maybe I knew that a day like this was coming. Was it just a coincidence that it was there? I had pulled out a meter-long lead pipe, not at all surprised to see it there. I raised it up high and brought it back down. There was no way Rina could block this hard and heavy lead pipe with just her arms. She'd probably tried to block it with the palms of her hands in order to try take it from me. But her long nails wouldn't let that happen. Unable to catch it the way she wanted, she broke her fingers and some of her nails came off too. Ah! Yeah! Her scream made me realize that I had the advantage. An advantage I had to keep. If I hadn't, she did, she'd turn the tables just like I did, and then she'd choke me to death for sure. Yeah! The Stop! Stop it! Wait! Dina shielded her head with her arms, but it didn't help. All that would change was that it'd break her arms before I broke her face. I'm serious! Stop it right now! Ugh. Yeah. I'm serious too. Die, die, die! You should die! Yeah, that's right. I should have done this a long time ago. I didn't need proof. I didn't have to talk to anybody. That's stupid. That's nonsense. I should have done this a long time ago. If I had done it a long time ago, my father wouldn't have been deceived. I could have protected him. I could have protected my family. I could have protected my life. I could have been myself. My mother wouldn't have divorced my father. I could have stayed happy. I wouldn't have had to be unhappy. I'm going to recapture my happiness at this moment. I'm going to win back my happiness. I'm not going to cry for misfortune. I'm not going to give in to fate of unhappiness. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to seize my happiness right now with my own two hands. The greatest defense mechanism I developed was to play my freaky card, either playing up the more freaky demons, I just lose my mind on the spot. I mean, 
I guess... You know, honestly, in most situations... I, I feel, I feel like, in a situation like this, being lewd would maybe help you. So, that's, so that's a good, that's a good mentality to have. I mean, maybe, maybe not in this specific situation, but, you know, in a, in a situation where your life is in danger like this and you're being threatened. You know. Nina tried to run away from me. But as she no longer had the use of her hands, it made it difficult for her to stand up to escape, especially since there were scraps of junk everywhere on the ground. After all, this is my hideout. This is my territory. Nobody can run away from me here. She tried to climb up on the slip of garbage, slipped and fell, and rolled all the way back down. She didn't stand up or move. Her eyes were open and her neck was bent at an unnatural angle. I didn't know how to make sure she was dead, so I kept looking at her opened eyes for a while. She could be faking it for all I know, but she didn't close her eyes no matter how long I waited. I scooped up a handful of sand and threw it on her face. She still didn't close her eyes. Thud. The lead pipe slipped out of my hand and hit the ground. When I tried to pick it up, I realized how heavy it was, and I was surprised that I was wielding it as though it was a knife. I was sweating all over. The cold wind felt good on my skin. The cries of the Higadashi were calming me down and healing my soul. Lena was just like a broken dummy now. She had just become a piece of junk. I am the owner of this land of junk, and I've defended it from her intrusion. Now she was a resident of this junkyard. I didn't feel bad about killing her. In fact, I felt rather fulfilled that I had defeated the evil woman who had deceived my father. I started breathing slowly and calmly, and I regained enough energy to analyze the situation. I'd have to hide her body. First... I had to get rid of her scooter. I climbed up the slope and kicked her scooter down the hill. It rolled down the slope, making a lot of noise, and blended in with all the junk as it stopped, like it was there from the beginning. I went back down the slope and started dragging her body to my hideout. It should have taken an e as much effort as dragging 50 kilogram sandbag, but it felt lighter than that. It was just a sandbag, yet it brought disaster to my family. I didn't lure her here in order to kill her. Or did I? Maybe I just didn't notice that I had that intention deep down in my heart. But even so, I felt like this was the best and most obedient solution- or ex exped expedient? Yes. There was no better solution than killing her. How wasteful to depend on someone to help me, or for to wait- to wait the day to come that they w when they will. I feel like I botched that. No, if your opponent knows there's nothing they can do to make you break your will or pride, they can't do anything. Mm. They'll be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you if you do this, and it's just like, ooh, knife play. And they'll, they'll be like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I remembered the murder of Satoshi Kun's aunt that happened earlier, or happened last year. I had no doubt that Satoshi Kun murdered her, but I had never been as convinced as I am at this moment. How could he have saved Satoko-chan, other than by killing his aunt last year, at that time and that circumstance? My situation was much the same as his. How could I have saved my father other than by killing her? If I was planning a murder, I would have been under a lot of pressure and stress. But, for better or for worse, the moment came to me out of nowhere. That's why I believe I solved my problem with as li little trouble as possible. Now that she's gone, will anyone become suspicious about her disappearance? She was an irresponsible person who skipped work at her own convenience. So, I didn't think anybody would get suspicious when she'd disappear one day. She was a big mess from the start. People will think she went into hiding because she got into deep trouble with someone. I didn't need to fabricate an alibi. All I needed to do was get rid of her body. It took me a while to figure out how to do that last part. Hiding her body would be very risky, but my brain had become so calm that it did some calculations and came up with an answer right away. Yes, this place is still the safest. This is the place forgotten. Nobody comes here. Nobody knows this place is here. I knew that because I had been spending a lot of time here. Compared to taking the risk of carrying her body to some other place, it was a lot safer to just hide it here. But it wasn't perfect yet. This place wouldn't remain a secret forever. I could hide it here for now, and I'd come, have to come up with the perfect way to make it completely disappear. It's a lot easier to think about that than thinking about how to make Lena break up with my father. I stuffed her corpse into a broken refrigerator in the trash pile. I wanted to cover the refrigerator with dirt and bury it. But that was too easy. I had to chop the corpse into pieces and make them completely disappear. 
I felt like it got dark all of a sudden. No, it didn't get dark all of a sudden. I just didn't realize it was getting dark until just then. I could hear thunder from the distance. It might rain soon. I could use some rain. It washed Nina's dirty blood into the ground. I should go home. I should think about what I'd do tomorrow. I was going to stay right beside my father until he forgets about her. He might be hurt at first, but we're going to recapture our happiness for sure. Our happy, peaceful life. Your dad's gonna be like, where, where is, where is my girlfriend? And she'll be like, don't worry about it. <sighs> don't worry about it. <laughs> my body was heavy with exhaustion, but I also felt fulfilled because I took a very important first step today. I'll keep taking one step after another. I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm not going to cry until I win back my happiness. I'm not going to cry again. Oh man, <laughs> if I waited a few more sentences, I would have had the perfect time to take a little sip. I guess I'll take another little sip. You don't need to get remarried. That was the first thing I said after I got home. My father looked stunned. <laughs> I mean, I would be too. <laughs> You're just, you're just planning to date a girl and your daughter is like, you don't have to get remarried. I'd be like, um, what? <laughs> Where is this coming from? Hello? <laughs> what did you do? He noticed the sad tone in my voice and realized that I didn't agree with the idea of his remarriage. He looked down. I understand. I know how you feel, Reyna. I should have talked about it with you first and- That woman is lying to you about her pregnancy. Don't talk like that. Renuna san is. I'll tell you the truth. That woman and a guy called Techan are on a team of bad people. She went out with you only because she was trying to get our money. My father didn't get it right away, of course. He looked upset instead because I called her that woman. I should have chosen my words a little more carefully, but I think I told him the truth clearly enough. I told him everything I heard and saw at the coffee house. As I expected, he defended Rina anyway. I was upset, but at the same time it made me certain that there was no other way other than to kill her. I felt the pressure on my shoulders lessen for some reason. My father thought he needed my approval for his remarriage, so he held back his anger and put a fake smile on his face instead. Hey, Reyna, let's sit down with a cup of tea and talk. I'm sure you'll understand once you hear me out. A tamed animal is still tamed, even after the owner is dead. That's okay. I'll open the gate anyway. Even a tamed animal will notice that one day he's no longer in captivity. That's not something I could teach him. He had to realize it on his own. I couldn't stand his, his fake smile anymore, so I left the living room. Time healed the pain from the divorce. Time heals any kind of pain, just like how dripping water will eventually bore a hole through solid rock. I did what I could do. Now, I'd have to wait. But the day I was going to wait for came earlier than expected. At midnight of the following day, we had a visitor. It was that Tetchan man, Tepe Hojo. <laughs> Tepe didn't even knock on the door to get in. He broke into the house by smashing the window. At first, I thought he came here to ask us about Rina's whereabouts, but I was wrong. The real reason why Tepe came here was because it was their plan. It was the last stage of their badger game. Rina was probably supposed to be in bed with my father at that time tonight. Tepe must have wanted to show up and catch them sleeping together. Tepe looked around the house, but he couldn't find Rina. He didn't change the plan, though. He grabbed my father by his collar and started yelling threats. He showed my father a certificate of marriage to Rina and shouted at him, saying, You got my wife pregnant. How are you going to take responsibility? My father had no idea she was married. He looked shocked. <laughs> While open air, you'd only need to hide it for two months or if you bury it, you'd have to hide it for two years. Or if you dump the corpse into a large thing of strong, basic liquids, you can have you break it down, calcium buildups, and you have to dump it in the river or landfill. I mean, you could probably just dump it in the in the demon lake <laughs> that apparently like goes down for two days or something. <laughs> you don't turn your back on family. <laughs> My father is a short guy who is faint of heart. He just let Tepe do and say whatever he wanted from beginning to end. I looked at them from a distance coldly. The more Tepe yelled and threatened my father, the faster he'd wake from his bad dream. 
This was the medicine for him. Tepe was cutting out the cancer that I was going to depend on time to do, and he was doing a great job of it. <laughs> that's that's a bad way of thinking about this scene. <laughs> Erdena. I wanted to help my father until I was sure that he finally awakened from his bad dream. I told Tepe that I had something very important to tell him and took him outside and then I just smashed his face. So, what do you want? Has Rina-san come back to Okinomiya since yesterday? Hmm? As a matter of fact, she's hiding somewhere. What? I don't get it. Rina-san told me to take you to her when you came to my house. Huh? The f is Ritsuko thinking? Tepe folded me without hesitation. He walked in the dark with a flashlight to the place where nobody comes and nobody can hear us. The place forgotten. I forgot that. Man, I just I just forgot entirely that Tepe was in this arc. Is it raining outside? <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, you guys can't see it. I just looked out the window and it's just wet and it's like, hello? It's sunny. <laughs> hmm. Corpse float. Well, you put rocks on it. <laughs> Good luck carrying that sandbag without anyone noticing you got a body bag. Totally not suspicious. Well, you know, you cut it up and you take it piece by piece. <laughs> She's hiding somewhere, so I'll show you. <laughs> Here, come to my murder pit. <laughs> He asked me many things on the way, but I couldn't answer any of them. I just told him to ask Dina. The way I said it seemed to make him think that Dina was going to betray him and get married to my father for real. Even though he was breathing heavily in a rage, he walked right behind me without any suspicions. I knew this day was going to come very soon, so I was well prepared for it. We reached the place where I originally planned to bring him, and I turned off the flashlight all of a sudden. Oh, what's going on? Everyone gets nervous when the only light in the, in the dark goes off. But this is my territory. I didn't need any light. I could feel my surroundings even better with my eyes closed. I grabbed the big hatchet I'd hidden in a bush and lifted it up high. I'm sorry. Guess the battery went out. Hold on a second. Okay, hurry up. I purposely sounded weak and helpless while I raised the hatchet into the air. Oh, I got a lighter. I'll just fire this baby up. Tepe found the lighter in his pocket and lit it up. He probably couldn't understand the sight illuminated by that small light. He saw a girl lifting a big hatchet right in front of him. Oh. Tepe's eyes went wide. He didn't understand what was going on, but he understood that his life was in danger. And yet, he must not have been able to think fast enough to deal with it even though he understood what he should do. Even if he could think fast enough and blocked his head with his arms, it wouldn't have meant anything. I knew Tepe would come to my house eventually. That's why I prepared for that day. I didn't think that preparation was going to bear fruit tonight. I chose my weapon very carefully. I planned when, where, and how I was going to attack him. And so, there can only be one result. The hatchet cut deeply into his forehead. Oh. I felt an indescribable vibration through the hatchet when it hit him, and this told me that I broke his skull. He bragged about how good he was at fighting at the coffee house, but he sure went down quickly when faced with a murderous weapon. He was done in a single blow. Tepe slowly fell to his side with the hatchet in his forehead. He looked like a victim in a B-movie. I killed this big guy with just one big, one hatchet. He was probably quite experienced in the world of violence. But I was better than him when it came to killing. Why? Because I've killed someone before. It's all done now. The bad people who deceived my father and tried to rob him blind are all gone. I did what I had to do in order to protect my life. If I had this much courage and determination when my mom told me about the divorce, I might have killed Akihito. If I did, I would have taken the life of only one. Because I couldn't do it back then, I'd have to kill two people in the last two days. Nana. Let's finish it up. There's already a place to hide the body. I took care of everything. My hands were wet, so I shone the flashlight at them. I thought it was blood, but it was just sweat. Even so, I still felt uncomfortable and shone the flashlight at my hands several times. I did all this in order to be happy. I did all this so I sh should be happy now. I tried so hard that I got the blood on my hands. I wanted to get credit for that from him. Oyashiro-sama, let me ask you a question. 
I can finally rewind time back to the day everything started to go wrong, can't I? I'm going to stay in Hinamizawa. I'm going to live happily with my father forever. And then just rolls credits, just like, everything was fine, the end. It's rare to see Urena sleep in class. Oof, brain trauma, not a good way to go out. That's literally like deleting parts of computer operating system while it's still running. Yeah, I... Oof. I... Gosh, I feel like you would actually also, like, feel the pain in that, like, few seconds that you're still conscious. Ugh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. It's weird to see Urena sleep in class. She isn't the kind of girl who sleeps in class because of staying up so late. She had to be tired of doing housework or something. Everybody seems to be thinking the same thing. Nobody tried to wake her up. Not even Chie-sensei. She got up for a few seconds and went back to sleep. She swayed back and forth like she was rowing a boat. But she's in class. Should I wake her up? I sh so I should wake her up, right? I was about to wake her up, but before my hand touched her, Mion gave me a sign not to. Let her sleep. She must be really tired today. Ugh. You're right. I heard a few days ago that Nana lives with her father. She studies during the day, plays a lot after school, and does things around the house after that. I didn't know that. I also didn't know her mother had divorced her father. Mion told me that, and she also told me not to talk about it because Nana is still hurt by the divorce. I didn't even notice that she's been th through such a tough time. Rena is the kind of girl who doesn't show her pain to others. She always looks happy and cheerful, but she might be acting that way on purpose. Nena told me that happy days will one day come to an end. She told me that she knew that firsthand. What could she have been through? I had no idea. That's probably why she tried to spend as much time as, pos as peacefully and cheerfully as she could. I must have hurt her feelings when I said I was bored of having happy days. When I thought about it, I felt bad for living off my parents, who are both healthy and happy. For that matter, Satoko and Rika-chan lost their parents too. Mion lives with her grandmother, far away from her parents, because she needs to learn to be the head of the Sonozaki family in the future. When I realized all that, I felt bad about my situation. My brain doesn't have pain nerves, you would feel your brain... Or you feel your brain, you just feel the bones breaking. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. You don't have to feel bad about living with your parents. Mion seemed to have read my mind. She said it with a cool expression on her face. A family is the most common community for kids like us to live in, but it's not the only community we have. You mean friends? You're right. Do you think you're as good a family as Tirena? Tirena does cleaning, laundry, cooking, and shopping, so she must be tired every day. She could spend her afternoon taking naps. But she doesn't do that. She spends her afternoons playing with us. That means... How should I put it? That means we're her best friends. So you're saying we're friends with as much value as her family to her? Mion looks stunned. As if she didn't understand what I was talking about. Uh, I didn't know what friends meant for you until today. But I believe friends are just as important and valuable as family. It's actually very easy to understand. Rika chan joined our conversation. The important thing is to have people around whom you can feel comfortable. Sometimes you call them family, or sometimes you call them friends. It's just a matter of the words you use. Or... Maybe... Oops. I, I, I think Keiichi was the one that said that. Are friends the same as family to you, Rika chan Or maybe... No, I don't know! I don't know who's talking! <laughs> yes, they are. They confused me because I had ellipses at the very beginning and that's been her, like... Her thing. I believe they are to Satoko, me, and Nana too. I guess that's what they, what we are always trying to stay together. Do you ever feel lonely when you're with your friends? They're my family, so I'm not lonely. Mion nodded in agreement. Sethko was talking with her other classmates, but I'm sure she would not as well. 
Then I would too. I'm a little embarrassed. Why? I've been using the word friends, but I don't think I understood the true meaning until today. Friends are more important and irreplaceable than I thought they were. That's like common sense. You should take this opportunity to remember that. Yeah, I will. I also recommend that you don't say that again. Kei-chan, you just said something very embarrassing, you know. After all that, Mion still made fun of me. I think I understand a little better why Irena was always so serious about having fun. I want to be her best friend, and I want to do the best to be deserving of her effort. Irena snored. It sounded cute. Chie-sensei let her sleep in class, but she couldn't let her get away with snoring. Class president, wake her up, please. Nana, get up. <laughs> Nana was still half asleep and made a strange noise. Everybody in class laughed. Nana noticed that they were laughing at her, woke up right away, and acted like she wasn't sleeping at all. It looked really funny, and I burst into a fit of laughter. Outside the window, the sky was blue, and the clouds were pure white. It was still June, but it looked like the middle of summer. This perfect weather wouldn't last forever. It would get cloudy and rain all of a sudden. That's why we had to play and raise a ruckus while we still had this perfect weather. The cries of the cicadas sound as if they're laughing at us because we still have some classes left. Huh, damn it. I can't wait for school to finish. Hey, Tiku. You look very happy. Did something special happen today? Nothing. Today is today. Tomorrow is tomorrow, right? Yeah. I'm just happy we have our perfect weather today. I don't care about the weather tomorrow. I want to enjoy today as much as I can. When the weather changes, I don't want to regret that I didn't. I learned that from Rena. I learned that peaceful days are the happiest you can have and that they're irreplaceable. Mion, what are we going to do for today's club activities? We need something very exciting for the punishment, too. <laughs> That's the spirit I like, Keicha. Because you insist, I'll put you through a living hell. Keitsukun, don't provoke her too much. Hey, are you scared, Rena? I know you're better than that. Let's show her our true power again. Remember, we haven't brought an end to our last battle. I grinned at her, and she grinned back. <laughs> I do remember that. Okay, let's do it then. Nana san you certainly got me last time. For that, I must pay you back with interest. <laughs> this is getting very interesting. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> I can't wait for school to finish. I couldn't wait either, but this time we spend just talking together is also very precious. Yeah, it would be nice if school ended soon. So sweet. So sweet of Thais. Credits roll, everything is fine. My favorite wine, what? <laughs> um, how about just apple juice? Apple juice would be nice. <laughs> Sethiko went to join the children playing in the schoolyard. Since I didn't feel like going, I decided to stay at home. Most likely, she wouldn't be back until the evening. When Sethika wasn't around, I had ways of spending time without her. Besides, that was what I wanted to do anyway. I stuck my hand deep inside the pile of winter futons in the closet and pulled one out. Next, I filled a stylish-looking glass with ice. The ice made in the freezer smelled of chlorine, though, and didn't taste good. Store-bought ice would be the best, but since Sethika kept asking me what I was using it for, I stopped buying it. But it might be worth spending time to think about a good excuse for that if it meant I would be able to enjoy ice without ever again smelling the chlorine. I filled the glass with mineral water, and then poured a little bit of another liquid into the glass. Watching the color mix into the transparent water was a very pleasant thing. This wasn't the right way to drink it, but I liked it that way, and I didn't want to hear any complaints. My body is very convenient because I can get drunk with only a tiny amount. That's why I dilute that small amount with a full glass of water. Thanks to that, I can enjoy a single bottle for a long time. It wasn't bad if you thought about it like that. I put a cushion on my favorite spot by the window, and with a glass in one hand I enjoyed the familiar view and a soft wind brushing through my hair. 
A slightly sweet ripened aroma tickled my nose. And just when I was about to start enjoying the atmosphere, the annoying one came back. She didn't like this bad habit of mine, and she complained every time I tilted the glass. She started nagging me noisily. Shut up. Be a little more tolerant. I can drink and eat whenever I want. Y you can't! Kids aren't supposed to drink alcohol! I tried to ignore her, but she started making a fuss, as if trying to ruin the atmosphere on purpose. There was no way I could enjoy getting drunk like this. I glared at her and threw the drink out the window. Do you want to know why I'm depressed? I'm depressed because the way I die has been decided. It seemed like she finally understood why I wanted to drown myself in alcohol. You don't have to feel down. I get to die instantly, so it's not that scary. My body will be burned and cut into pieces, but I'll be able to die instantly. But not yet. I know. Not yet. Er. Er, but not yet. I know. Not yet. When am I going to die again? I think it's the night of the 25th of June. It's about a week after the Watanagashi festival. Well, that sounds reasonable. Is it... my fault? Of course it is. Are you serious? <laughs> she's the one who asked me, yet she cried when I told her she was right. Oh, jeez. She's always so annoying. Let's keep trying. I'm sure I'll get six in a row on the next board game. June 25th. I still had ten more days. I was going to relax and enjoy those ten days. I still had some wine left, too. Why are they freezing pool water? Well, I've, I've heard in some places, like, the water in the pipes isn't, like, super good. Like, different areas have different water quality, so it could just be, like... There's a bunch of chlorine in the water for some reason there. <laughs> it had been very hot for the past few days, and the corpses went rotting quickly. Any housewife knows how fast fresh meat can go bad. I know it, too. That's why the first thing I did was to dismember the corpses. There was only one reason why I needed to dismember them. I had to reduce them to a portable size in order to carry them to a place where they'd never be found. When men see the words dismembered corpses, they'll probably feel disgusted because they don't cook. What? What? <laughs> but housewives are used to taking the guts out of fish, and they sometimes even see living maggots. They take the maggots off the food and even cook with the maggots still on. The heat will kill them after all. Women don't need, don't tell men what they do in the kitchen because men wouldn't eat the food if they knew. Excuse me, Nana? <laughs> so it didn't really bother me much to dismember them. I was released from all of my problems by killing them. Cleaning up the mess was nothing, was like nothing to me. Because I got freedom and regained my happiness. You're preparing the dismembered corpses into food, <laughs> right? It's like, what? <laughs> It's like, that's some weird logic. Oh yeah, guys don't like the sound of dismembered corpses because they don't cook. <laughs> Women cook maggots in their food. It's like, Renata, what? What, do you, what kind of food are you making, Renata? <laughs> I dismembered the corpses using carpenter's tools, like a saw and a hatchet. I'm very lucky I have a very large body and a fast metabolism for me to get drunk. I do not drink. <laughs> I'm wearing a large sweatsuit I bought for today because I thought I might get stained in blood. Blood stains don't show on black fabric, and I can just throw it away after it's done. I brought a plastic sheet I found in the dump because I thought the blood might spread otherwise. If I did the work on this sheet, I could just burn it after I was done. In the end, dismembering human bodies is no different from preparing food on a chopping board. Just put, just put Tepe and, and, uh, Ritsuko in little bentos. I was very tired from chopping apart two adult bodies, but I didn't have a problem doing it. I cut off their arms, legs, and heads, dividing each body into six pieces. I heard from before that blades get easily ruined by fat when you cut apart a corpse, so I brought many kinds of tools. 
And I was right. I didn't have to go back and forth between here and my house to get another tool in the middle of work. A long time ago, a construction manager was murdered and his body was dismembered here during the dam conflict. He was cut into six pieces in the same way. Well, I had two bodies, so there was double that, though. I remembered the main suspect was still on the loose, and the victim's arm he hid hadn't been found yet. I wonder where he hid it. I'd like to ask him. I smiled wryly. Unlike the arms, legs, and heads, the torsos were difficult to take care of. I thought about cutting them into smaller pieces, but I decided against it because I thought it'd be troublesome to clean up the guts. I put each piece on a black trash bag and sprayed a lot of deodorant. I wasn't sure if it would help against the smell, though. Many bugs flew around me while I was dismembering the corpses. After I finished putting all the pieces into each bag, the bugs were still flying around, but that was just because they could smell the blood. I used to work at my grandfather's farm. I know how to gut and prepare fresh meat. <laughs> just put them into Lunchables and put them on sale. They got, they got very soon with no evidence found. That is a good idea. Just put them in little slices. How to be like the, the like ham and cheese cracker thing. After, or after I cleaned up everything, they were all gone. Now all I need to do is get rid of these 12 black bags. Burning them would be easiest, but I don't think I could burn them to ashes without using a cremator. The best way, to bury the, the best way is to bury them somewhere. Other than the torsos, every piece is small enough to fit in my backpack. I could easily, pardon me, I could easily carry them without being noticed. I could throw them into the river, running through the dam construction site. But if I did that, somebody would find them for sure. I've seen on the news several times before that a bag with a body part in it was found beside a river. Every time I heard something like that, I always thought the murder was stupid. I thought about dumping into the Onigafuchi swamp, but rotten meat floats. I thought about weighing the bags, but there's no guarantee they'd stay down. Just put something really heavy. Put something that's not cute in there, and it'll sink. So that left me with one choice, to bury them. There are many unexplored mountains on the end of the abandoned districts around Yagoichi and Takatsudo. It's probably best to bury them somewhere in the mountains. While it would be safe to bury them here in the garbage dump too, it's not perfectly safe. And so, I'm going to bury all these bags somewhere deep inside the mountain in order to completely erase the two of them. My joints hurt, since I've been using muscles I don't normally use. I cleaned up the mess very carefully and got into my hideout. While still wearing the sweatsuit, I laid down on the mattress. I washed my hands carefully, but there was still dirt and blood under my nails. I should take a shower later and wash it off completely. When I say things like disposing of corpses, it sounds like I'm the greatest evil of the century. But that's only true if I get caught. What I did isn't a crime as long as I don't get caught. Plus, I didn't do this because I wanted to commit a crime. I didn't do anything wrong. I, didn't, I did this to protect my father's life and mine. People might speak ill of me, but I don't care about them. In the end, I don't think anybody could really pass judgment on my sins. Sins aren't something to pass judgment on. They're something to confess and atone to. Then don't make the same mistake as Keiji is. <laughs> then again, I doubt she'd botch it as bad as he did in the earlier... Yeah. <laughs> and I think she'd be, she'd be smart about it. But yeah, they both have the intention of like, you know, it's not a crime if I'm not caught. You know, it's not, it's not something bad, you know, yeah. <laughs> In other words, nobody can measure the weight of the sin other than the person who committed the crime. Do I regret what I did? Do I feel sorry? No. I don't think I did anything wrong. I usually believe there was no better way than killing them. I'm sure it was the right thing because my life had already started to change since the night I killed them. A few days earlier, I just came home after killing Tepe. My father was cleaning the room Tepe had thrashed earlier. His eyes were swollen. He'd been crying. Reina, where have you been? I was talking with him. I said, Reina san will never come to our house again, so please leave us alone. Therefore, I'll never come back. I don't think he'll stay away from us that easily. You should watch out for him for a while, too. It's hard to explain to him why Tepe would never come back. I can't tell him he shouldn't worry because I killed him. I grabbed ice cubes from the freezer and put them in a plastic bag and handed them to my father. Here you go, Dad. Your cheeks are swollen. He must have only noticed it just then. Oh, thank you. Don't worry about cleaning up the mess. I'll do it. I'll get the vacuum cleaner. Reina. He called out to me. I'm sorry. 
I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. They make their living by deceiving people. You were just one of their targets. Reina, did you know who they were? Yes, I found out recently. I didn't tell you because I thought you wouldn't believe me. I'm sorry. He looked down. When he told me about how he wanted to get remarried, I told him that they were bad people and that they scammed others with badger games. But he didn't believe me. So I was right in saying that he wouldn't have believed me at all. She took advantage of your pain. I'm... a very bad father. Then he started talking about how he met Renya, Rina, as if trying to absolve his guilt. It was when he was suffering the most, and he needed to drink away his sorrow. At a bar he happened to go into, Nina-san was the one who came to his table. It was her job to be a good listener when her customers talked. Nina must really have been a great listener, and offered words of comfort when he talked about the divorce. If he was emotionally stable, he could have taken it as a kindness that she was only offering at the time. But he was so desperate that he took it the wrong way. After that, the tragedy was inevitable. He wanted to believe that it was destiny and he glamorized everything about her. It would be easy to laugh at him and say that he was just dreaming. But I don't blame him, because being weak is also part of being human. He had plenty of opportunities to grow suspicious of her questionable spending habits. But my father just read even that behavior as an attempt to cheer him up. He bought everything she asked him to, and Nina had landed her catch. He shouldn't have bought, brought his lover to the house where his daughter lived. But he was crazy about her, and he didn't even think about it. I'd forgotten that I was a father first. What was I thinking? He started crying. I held his shoulders gently. It's okay. You realized it in the end. You're my father no matter what. You're the only family I have. He couldn't stop moaning. We held each other and cried together. The next day, my father got up early in the morning. He was already cooking breakfast when I got up, and he told me, Your father is going to get his act together from today onward. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Dad, you should have used salad oil before you cooked them sunny side up. <laughs> it's been a long time since I cooked. <laughs> we pried off the burning eggs on the pan with a spatula, and he added salad oil to it. It was too late. Doing that just made it an even bigger mess. But I didn't say anything, because I wanted to eat his eggs. I waited at the table quietly. He put the burned eggs on a plate and brought them over to me. It looked like he tried to salvage them by adding cheese, but it didn't really work. Still, it smelled good and crispy. It actually stimulated my appetite. So do some of the characters remember each of the timelines? I, um... Only one of the characters. Only one of them. <laughs> Yeah, only, only Rika. That's the only person that knows all of the timelines. Everybody else is entirely oblivious. But you know. That's, that's, that, that's something we'll learn more about either at the end of this chapter or in the next chapter. <laughs> Thick cut toast popped out of the toaster. I made coffee with extra milk and sugar because my father liked it sweet. We put everything on the table. It looked terrible like the cooking class of an elementary school. But to me, it was precious, because my father tried very hard to make it, wearing the apron. Great. It smells good. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. <laughs> might be better than... I might be better than you do at the cooking. I feel bad making you eat this. I'll take care of cooking when you take care of getting a job. It had been a taboo to talk about work in our house. He hadn't worked since the divorce. It wasn't only because of the divorce, though. He just didn't have to work because the settlement my mother gave him was so huge. Plus, I let him be lazy because I felt guilty about the divorce. Copper pans are good, but cooking on cast iron pans, that's perfect. <laughs> Yee. And she face palms every time she sees her friends derailing the timeline, right? <laughs> just every time someone does something very specific, she's just like, Guys, guys, please, I hate dying that way, please! <laughs> that's my least favorite death! They all suck, but it's my least favorite. <laughs> but my father cleared his wrongdoing by showing a repentance to me. And I also atoned for my sin of not doing anything about my mother. But by doing what I but doing what I did the previous night. Now we are free of sin. 
I'm going to try to find a job. I'm thinking about going to the employment service agency today. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's not money that he wanted. He just needed a normal lifestyle. I'm old and not very strong. I'm a bit worried if I can find a job at all. What kind of job are you looking for? I'd prefer a desk job, but I don't think a lot of companies would offer one to an old man like me. I can ask my friend. Mitan is the daughter of a big landowner in Hinamizawa, and she might be able to find you something. No, it's okay. I'll do it myself. I have to man up, you know? <laughs> I don't remember the last time we enjoyed breakfast like this. I don't even remember the last time we had breakfast together. For the first time in a long time, the morning light felt refreshing. I wanted to keep enjoying life like this, but unfortunately, I had to go to school. I told him that I'd skip school that day and that I wanted to take I wanted him to take me somewhere fun, but he tried to be a good father and said that I had to go to school. Well, I have to go now. Okay, have a good day at school. He followed me to the front door. I was a bit embarrassed for some reason. He talked to me while I was tying my shoes. He followed me here not because he wanted to see me off, but because he wanted to tell me something. I've been sad ever since your mother divorced me, but I realize that I shouldn't be sad because I have you, Dana. I don't have to feel sad at all. Dad, that's what being a family is about. Yes, you're right. Again, I'm not a good father because I had to learn something that simple and important from my own daughter. Well, I have to go now. Kichikun is waiting for me. Have a good day. Oh, Arena, I'm going to cook dinner tonight. I'll do the grocery shopping on the way back from the employment service agency. Look forward to it. I promise I won't fail like I did just now. <laughs> okay, I'm looking forward to it. See you tonight. You guys know I don't want to get stabbed because you talked about your dog. <laughs> This sounds oddly specific. Well, remember in like the, it was either the first or second chapter, like, <laughs> they were talking about Keiji's pubes for some reason. <laughs> I remember you clipped it, so. <laughs> I left the house. My father saw me off, still in the apron. It was the first step of our new life. I finally regained it. I finally regained something, everything we lost after we left Hinamizawa. My father wasn't around, or my mother wasn't around, but I didn't feel sad because I had my father. The cries of the cicadas sounded as if they were celebrating my new life. <laughs> was I really that on the nose? <laughs> <laughs> the sunshine was bright and the wind was sending up a nice breeze. The only thing that wasn't nice was the ticking clock. I was late because I spent too much time talking with my father. Keichi-kun might already be gone. I don't think he'd be waiting for me that long. But he was there anyway. This is the third time we brought that up. Why are we like this? Man, I don't know. We're, we're forgetful. <laughs> hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Sorry I'm late. It's okay. I usually make you wait, so it's okay that I wait once in a while. <laughs> We're really going to be late. We should walk fast, I think. I think. Not sure, just sounded very specific. <laughs> Crimson, you were the one that did the clip. <laughs> yeah, let's walk fast. We might have to run at the end. Er, Mitan might already be gone. She's waiting for sure. We're friends. We'd never leave each other behind, right? Anyway, did something good happen this morning? What? Why do you ask that? Oh, right now I remember that. Yeah. It was it was forever ago. That was like the first, like I said, the first or second chapter. <laughs> well, you look very happy for some reason. I just thought maybe something good happened to you. The good mood I was in must have been too obvious for Keiji Kun to ignore. I had not only my family, but my friends too. I felt something warm spreading in my heart. <laughs> well... I'll tell you what happened this morning. My father made breakfast, but... <laughs> what? Isn't that the right way to cook eggs? You use salad oil for making salads, don't you? What? <laughs> I have to tell everyone you just said that. Ooh, what did you say? Those rude remarks are unforgivable. Fine, bring it if you're saying that. Then you're willing and ready to throw down, aren't you?
Hey, hey, what's going on? Satoko, Kei-chan, why don't you two place an outside bet on our club activities today? It'll be fun. Mi-chan, what's an outside bet? What is it? <laughs> an outside bet means what it says. The Satoko and I would place a bet on each other outside the game. The one who played worse than the other has to suffer an extra punishment besides the normal one. That means I get to see one of you suffer no matter how who loses today. <laughs> so, what do you say, Satoko? That sounds like a wonderful idea to me. Keichi-san will take a punishment for being the lowest ranked in the game and another punishment for losing to me. Oh, how wonderful! Great, I like your spirit, Satoko. Alright, let's play today's game with our, out with our outside bet. It's more fun to think about punishments than to think about the game itself. It sure is. I can't wait to see how miserable Satoko is going to look after she takes her punishment. K keep dreaming, Katie san Ouch! Take that! Stop it! Yeah! Stop fighting, you two. The game hasn't even started yet. Chie-sensei opened the door and came in. Take your seats, everyone. Let's start with homeroom, then you can all go home. Oh. Wait. That's a short class. Everybody headed to their seats. Mita. Hmm? What? I'm sorry to ruin the mood, but I have to go home after school. I have things to do again today. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that you have to go. Are you busy with housework or something? Yep. Well, this old man has no right to stop you when it comes to housework. I don't do housework myself. Our housekeepers do that. You should help them sometimes. It'll be good training for married life. Don't worry about that. I already have that kind of skill, you know, to be a good wife. <laughs> Mi-chan looks like the kind of girl who tries to stay away from chores as much as possible, but she can actually do everything. That's just who she is. She went through hard times to learn these things, but she acts like she learned them without any struggle. That's also who she is. I like that about her. What? Are you going home, Renana? Then you won't see Katie san go to the teacher's office wearing an embarrassing outfit. What a shame. It's going to be fun. Pity you have to miss it. Yeah, sorry. You went home after school for housework yesterday, too. Did something happen? Yeah, kind of. It might take me a few more days. Well, then I guess you can't join us for a while. Maybe. I'll try to finish as soon as I can. Can we help out with the thing you have to do? If it's something like carrying out old furniture, let me know. I can help with that. Are you redecorating your house? This old man can bring lots of help for that. Oh, ho, ho. I have an idea. We can make a game out of helping her with her housework. At this rate, the person who doesn't end up helping her would be the winner. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. I really do appreciate it. Well, seems like there's nothing we can do. Therefore, I announce that Anadiga's withdrawal from the front lines as of today. I order you to take a rest until you finish your housework, and to return to the front as soon as you have gained your strength. Well, there's as many games as for four. Oh, can you play Mahjong, Keita? Yeah! My dad sometimes forces me to play Mahjong with him and his friends from work. <laughs> of course, we are good at Mahjong as well. After that, the f they fooled around and made lots of noise, just like they always did. I liked them and rem reminded myself that I'd always have a place to return to. I left the classroom with a smile. I was going to Yagoichi on my bicycle. I had to find a place to bury the bags with the body parts. Hopefully, I could finish burying all of them today before it gets dark. With that, everything would be over and done with. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, this is from Mion's perspective? Or wait, is it green? I can't tell if it's... <laughs> I can't tell if it's slightly green or if it's white. I've been looking at pink text too long. <laughs> I don't like that the back of the tiles are made of bamboo. You guys haven't marked them, have you? I wouldn't be too sure. Katie san you sound traumatized by the experience you had with our game, card game. 
Well, I think there are some scratches on them. They're cheap ones, you know. But it's more fun than there's an element of doubt, don't you think? I guess the I guess the font's white. It's just it looks slightly green for some reason. <laughs> Me, how many reds do you want to use? Six? Rikachan sounded professional and it scared me. Oh well, I should start by checking the tiles. Playing mahjong with my family is different from playing it as a club activity. I have to be cautious. It's possible that one tile is missing or that there's an extra, one extra of a particular tile in here. We don't do things like that. Still, that's interesting. I didn't think about that. Let's see. Me sitting here, it's like, I, I have no knowledge of Mahjong. I don't know how to go about it. <laughs> it's, it's been brought up in previous chapters, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't know a single thing about Mahjong. Let's put them all face down on the table and check them before we start the game. Come on. Everybody flip their tiles up, face up. Hmm? One dragon is missing. One low pin and one low soul are missing too. Oh, one low one is missing also. What's going on? There are so many missing tiles. Oh, I remember. Hold on a second. Mion hit the palm of her hand with her fist, moved her chair aside, and stuck her fingers into the gap of the floorboards. She pulled out a tile from under there. There you go. This is the dragon. I don't remember where I put the other three. Wait, Mion, why are there so many tiles hidden in the classroom? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> she must have hidden the other three tiles somewhere in the classroom and forgot where. We couldn't play Mahjong with three tiles missing. I suggested playing another game, but Mion insisted that we had to find them and suggest making that treasure hunt our game. As long as I can make Katie-san suffer a punishment, I care little as to what kind of game we play, but to be honest with you, I prefer to play something more interesting than that. I agree. Plus, you're not sure where they are in the classroom, right, Mion? No, they're here. Or maybe this old man might have put them in his pockets and left them by the washing machine. I don't remember. I recommend checking the total number of tiles after we play Mahjong with me next time. Everybody except me on a nodded in agreement. What? You don't want to play our classroom tile hunting game? In other words, cleaning up the mess Mion made so she can cheat? Do it yourself. Don't use our club activities for personal reasons. Fine, fine. So, what do you want to do? We can't play Mahjong now. What are we playing then? Does anybody have any ideas? As our club president, Mion usually decides what we play. I couldn't just come up with something on the spot. While we were all thinking, Mion hit her palm with her fist, just like she did earlier. I got an idea! If you don't want to hunt for tiles, let's do a real treasure hunt. What name comes to your mind when I say treasure hunting? Rena, right? You mean, are we going to the garbage dump at the dam construction site? I don't really go there often, but the place is large. I've heard that the place is haunted by the ghost of the man who was murdered there. His body was cut into pieces. You shouldn't go there. <laughs> A ghost? I like it. That's even better. <laughs> that, that was just Rika's way of being like, Uh, Rena's there and we probably shouldn't interrupt her. <laughs> I don't like there. I didn't know there was a rumor like that. I do know that someone was murdered there and that the main suspect is still on the loose. He had the arm of the victim and it hasn't been found yet, right? There's a rumor that a construction site manager, the victim of the dismembered mem murder case, became a ghost and that he's wandering around the place to find his missing arm. Rika? You don't like ghosts? Don't tell me you're still scared of ghosts. I'm a shrine maiden. I can see them even if I don't want to. Wow. You can see ghosts? If I remember right, I've heard that they're those who see spirits see them as naturally as they do us. That's utterly ridiculous. I've been living with Ika for a long time, but I've never seen anything like that. That's just because you can't see them, but I can. For example, when you're asleep in your bed, I always see... Nipa! 
Rika, why did you smile like that? What were you about to say? What do you see when I'm sleeping? Satoko, I feel sorry for you. You can pretend you're not scared of ghosts during the day, but I'm pretty sure you get scared when it gets dark. I'm going to make a silent phone call tonight just to scare the hell out of her. <laughs> Including myself. I don't think anybody really likes going there. But then the only one who does. If Nana finds a ghost when she's in her cute mode, she might take it home with her. That's so true. She'd say, Hau! Oji kairi! It was so easy to imagine that all of us laughed. Well, let's do it! Let's go treasure hunting! If you find a ghost, you win! You get a point if you find the victim's missing right arm. And you also get a point if you find... Uh... Anything that Dena would like. We can show what we found to Dena later, and we'll let her decide who's the winner. Oh, oh, oh. I can't wait to win the game and make katie san take double the punishment. Hey, Satoko, are you sure you want to win? That means you're going to see a ghost. Ooh. <laughs> S stop it! You're getting on my nerves. I don't want to go there. I'm scared of ghosts, too. What do you mean you're scared of ghosts, too? What else are you referring to? I'm not scared at all. Hey, Katie-san, stop doing that. Let's go, everybody. Let's find the ghost. Whoa! And it'll be over with. Everything will be over and done with. Yes, it will be over when the Higurashi cry. Ooh. Gotta take a little sippy while the transition happens. Oh gosh, we're in mid-chapter. I, I forgot about that. We got one more hour, so we might be able to finish this chapter and possibly start the next one? I don't know. So, that's it. Nana finished making her confession. There was no applause or a curtain call. It was a quiet and lonely stage that Nana performed on alone. I think I'd forgotten to blink since her confession started. Everybody else seemed to be feeling the same way. Nana looked at us like she was a teacher waiting for questions from her students. She noticed that she was imitating what Chie-sensei does at the end of class, and we all smiled bitterly. I went to Yagoichi earlier to find a place to bury these bags. It was hard to pick a place because I wanted to make sure that nobody would ever find them. I even thought about burying them in my backyard because it might be the safest. But after I thought about it, I knew I, that wouldn't work. My father might start planting vegetables one day and he might find them, so it's better that I bury them somewhere in the mountains. Plus, I don't ever want to let her near my father, even though she's dead. I felt like I did something very bad. Nana's plan was going smoothly. If I'd only hunted for the mahjong tiles instead of insisting on doing something else, this wouldn't have happened. When I looked at each of the others, they all seemed to be regretting their actions too. If Mion hadn't come up with the idea to play at the garbage dump, if Setuko hadn't found the broken refrigerator, if Rika-chan had convinced us not to go, Odana could have had a few more days, and she never she could have gotten rid of these trash bags. They never would have been found. Then what would have happened next? Nothing. Everything would have remained the same. We could have kept having happy and peaceful days. Odana had been through a hard time, but she had been forcing her smile into her face into a smile for us. The fake smile was supposed to become a real smile one day. None of us was supposed to notice that Nana was going through a hard time. After a while, Nana was supposed to be able to forget the bitter memory of killing these two, and she was supposed to live as if nothing had happened. But now, all of her effort, all of her courage, had been ruined. I know killing people is a bad thing to do. I didn't want to do this, and I don't want to do it again in the future. But... I believe this was the best solution, and I also believe I didn't do anything wrong. I just applied my utmost efforts when God presented me with the equal opportunity to regain my happy, peaceful life. 
Saying we should accept suffering and live an immaterial life without desires is nothing more than pretty words from those who have plenty. Nobody can belittle my efforts. Rather, they should praise me for what I did. They should celebrate for me. Then Ryugu fought for her own fate. And she won! I don't know why I did it, but I interrupted her. I shouldn't have. But I thought I needed to tell her this, so I did. But, Rena, why... Why didn't you tell us? What do you mean? We're friends, aren't we? Friends are always on your side without exception, no matter what. I thought friends were like family. If you told us about it, we could have helped you. Then you wouldn't have had to get your hands dirty. <laughs> Sorry, the, the trumpet. <laughs> what Rena told us made me sad. I couldn't help myself from saying that to her. Rena told us straight that she didn't do the best she could. She told us that right to our faces. That's the same thing as saying that she didn't need us in order to do the best she could. Kei-chan, you can say that now, but wait, let me finish. I believe that friends are there to share both happiness and hardship. If you came to talk to us, I believe we could have done something different. and We could have led you to a better future. A better future? There's no better future than what I have right now. This is the best possible future. That's a lie! My shouts seemed to scare her a little. I knew that Anna didn't believe that this was the best possible future. She didn't have any other choice. If she'd had other choices, she definitely wouldn't have chosen this one. I know you don't believe that, because you're crying. What? Who's crying? Me? I'm not crying. Yes, you are. You've been crying the whole time. Haven't you noticed it? In fact, I didn't see any tears in her eyes or on her face at all. But that didn't mean she wasn't crying. Adena was crying. She was crying because she was driven into a corner after all the hard work she did be to become happy. Her tears looked so sad. Anyone who couldn't see those tears wasn't really thinking about her. I'm not crying. <laughs> I won't cry. I did the right thing. I made the right choice. There's no reason for me to cry. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I have no idea what you're talking about, Keiichi. <laughs> I know it. You're crying right now! Nana stopped laughing all of a sudden, and she spoke with a cold expression on her face. Okay. Let's say I did what you just told me. I told you all about my father and that woman. Then what? Well... Um... Then what? Uh? Nana had never talked to me like this before. It was as if she was mocking my ignorance, and that made me shut my mouth. You don't know about what happened last year. Last year? Yeah! Last year! It happened in June of 1982. There was someone who had no choice but to kill a person to free himself from his misfortune. Sethiko gasped. Keiichi-kun, I don't think you know much about him. About Satoshi Hojo-kun. I know that he's Satoko's older brother. He's been missing, but people say he's transferred. There's a rumor that he killed his aunt for Satoko's sake. Therefore, it's been taboo to talk about Satoko in my class. Or Satoshi, rather. <laughs> Actually, in all of Hina Mizawa. Satoshi-kun was under the same conditions as I was. He just wanted to have happy, peaceful days. He just wanted to live peacefully and quietly with his sister. You've heard about what kind of person Satoko-chan's aunt was, haven't you? If what I'd heard is true, this is what happened. After Satoko lost her parents, her uncle and aunt got custody of her and her brother, but they were miserable people. Her aunt was especially cruel to Satoko. Satoshi was the kind of guy who wouldn't even hurt a fly, but his aunt probably was the only one whom he didn't have a problem killing. That's how terrible a person she was. Everybody in Hinamizawa knew about the trouble the Hojo family had. Everybody knew that their aunt was a hysterical and crazy person and that she bullied Satoshi-kun and Satoko-chan. Everybody knew everything. Everybody in our class knew it too. 
Mita, the future head of the three families, knew it. Rika-chan knew it. And Satoko-chan knew it too, of course, because she was the one experiencing it. The friends you're talking about knew what Satoshi-kun Satoshi was going through more than anybody in Hinamizawa. And what happened? Did anybody help Satoshi-kun? No. Nobody did. Mi-chan had the most influence of all of us, but she made up lame excuses, saying it might cause a conflict between the Sonozaki family and the villagers. In the end, all she did was was hurting him by offering her sympathy. Th th that's not true? Yes, it is. Satoshi-kun knew it too. He knew that you were only pretending to sympathize with him, and he knew that you had no intention to help him. That's why Satoshi-kun started to hate you, Mi-chan. He said that you always told him you were his friend, but after all that, you turned out to be just another Sonozaki. Just another person who bullied the Hojo family. I, I didn't mean to. You didn't do anything to help him. You rejected his request for, for help by sympathizing with him. Do you have any idea how much that hurt? Mion tried to find something to say, but failed to do so. She bit her lip instead. Rika-chan, you were the same too. Mm. Now Rena was pointing fingers at Rika-chan. Unlike Mion, Rika-chan looked emotionless and empty, just like Rena did. Rika-chan, you don't have the kind of power in Hinamizawa that Mi-chan does, but your word carries a lot of weight with the old people who come to your shrine, don't they? There was something you could have done for him, but you didn't. Hi, I laid down. Welcome back from... I'm, I'm guessing you're at least sitting up now. <laughs> Rikichan, you did exactly the same thing Mi-chan did. You just pretended to be his friend. All you did was sympathize with him and Satoko-chan. You didn't really help him out of the trouble they were in. Can you imagine how cruel and merciless your sympathy was to them? Said that you can wanted help. He wanted somebody to help him. He was at the dead end and you couldn't get out there by himself. He was sinking all the way down to his neck in a swamp, reaching for help and waiting for someone to grab his hand. You're right. Rika Chan's voice sounded mature. It was very different from how she usually sounded. I didn't know how to save them. All I could do was to offer them some consolation. I'm not going to deny it, nor am I going to have excuses for my sin of not having hard enough to find trying hard enough to find a way to save them. I didn't know you knew. Nana gave her a twisted smile. The ugliness caused me to look away. Satoko chan. I don't know if you'll believe me when I say this, but you're weighed down with sin too. I didn't understand why she was playing King Satoko. I tried to take her side, but I gasped in surprise when I looked at her. She looked like she was accepting the sin that Rena had mentioned. Satoko must have wanted to confess her sin before Rena pointed it out to her. And so, Satoko opened her mouth first. I don't know if you'll believe me when I tell you this either, but I realized this on my own. I know what my sin is. I see. I realized it on the night Nini disappeared. I wish I'd realized it when he was still here. I understand how you feel. That sense that it was too late for regrets, right? You feel the same way. It happened to me before. That's why I fought this time. Satoko-chan, I'm sure you can atone for your guilt in the future because you realized what you did. But that will bring Nini back. He's not coming back. Satoko looked down, sadly. Usually, Satoko would say the opposite. She always said that Satoshi was coming back one day without a doubt. But now, she accepted that fact that he would never return. She accepted it easily, as if she knew it already, because he's her brother. Do you understand now? She asked me all of a sudden. That's how they were in 1982. Satoshi couldn't talk to everybody he thought he could, could help him. He told them that he needed help. He told them what he was going through. He consulted with them. He even came to me, even though I had just moved here at that time. I don't think it was embarrassing or shameful that he did that. People get desperate when they're unhappy. Said that you couldn't try really hard. But he couldn't do anything about the situation and he asked for help. He kept asking for help. 
You said that friends are always on your side, no matter what. But this is what it, this is what friends really are. They're actually just people you hang around with for fun. They don't help you when you need them. Friends are always like that. That's why I decided not to tell anybody when I found out that I was in the same situation as satachi -kun. I know that nobody would help me and nobody could. I didn't need sympathy. It only makes me feel worse. It's better than that. I at least have fun at school. In fact, I did have fun at school. I was very happy. I was able to forget about the trouble I had with that woman, even if only for a short amount of time at school. I wish Satoshi Kun would have, could have done that too. If he did, he wouldn't have had to feel constantly helpless, and he could have at least enjoyed his time at school. He didn't have any other choice than beating his aunt to death anyway. I didn't know how to help him at that time because I just moved here. All I could do was listen to him and try to make him feel better. But there might have been something more I could have done. I might have been lazy in thinking about what I could do, but at that time, in 1982, I thought I was his friend. <laughs> oh. I did I didn't expect to see G. Nana's self-derisive laughter changed into grievous sobs. Her tears gradually wore away at our relationship of trust. Nobody will help me. Friends are just people whom you have fun with. You can't trust them. The more Renna cried, the clearer we heard her voice in her heart. Mion, Sotoko, and Rikachan looked into the distance with sad expressions on their faces. I was the only one who could say anything back to her now. I had to tell her this, and she knew it too. She just needed to hear it from someone. I braced myself to tell her something that might hurt everybody. I understand, Rana. I understand what happened in 1982. Mm? I understand that they were heartless. But Satoko also told you this. They realized their sins. They regretted what they did and didn't do. So it should be different this time. They can understand your pain and they can help you. You weren't here last year. I'm afraid you don't know what you're talking about. That's right. I wasn't here last year. I wish I were. If I were here last year, I would have fought for Satoshi. You're lying! I'm not lying! I've heard- I've learned how important friends are since I moved to Hinamizawa. I'll fight for my friends! If I were here last year and knew what Satoko's aunt did to her and Satoshi, I wouldn't have given Satoshi the opportunity to beat her to death. I would have done it myself! I would have done it in 1500 seconds. I wouldn't have even hesitated. I would have beaten her to death with a metal bat, specifically. That's easy for you to say, but you don't know the kind of determination you need to kill another person. I don't know that, and I don't need to know that either. You know why? Because it's an obligation to help your friends. You don't understand, Keitsu-kun! You don't know how disgusting it is to kill a person! You never knew- you can never get rid of the dirt on your hands, no matter how hard you try to justify it! You're right. Killing a person in order to save your friends is just a short-sighted way of thinking. It might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I think things aren't meant to go well when you take care of an evil matter by doing an evil deed. Wait, did I do- wait, did I do a Fakoda laugh? <laughs> I'm proud of my conviction that I wouldn't hesitate to kill a person for the sake of my friends, but the peace I get by doing an evil deed won't last forever. We all know that by instinct. That's why we all despise evil things, I think. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. She didn't have to tell me that. I was aware I wasn't making any sense. But for some reason, I could easily imagine a world like that. It's true, murder is deeply scarring and traumatizing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it sounded like a maniacal laugh to me. Ah. <laughs> it's just the arrows, I'm, I'm immediately like, Ah oh, yes, Pakoda! <laughs> <laughs> a world in which I saved my precious friends by committing an evil act. The peace I seized by doing that evil deed didn't last long. It got worse. It ended in a way as terrible as the sin I committed. This is a memory that shouldn't exist. I don't know why. 
but I know for a fact that it happened in that world of possibility. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. For some weird reason, I couldn't prevent myself from smiling in embarrassment, even in a situation like this. But you know it too, don't you, Denna? You know that you didn't want to get your hands dirty. You're crying because you wanted us to help you, but we didn't. You don't want to be a murderer. You're lying when you claim that this was the best choice you could have made. That's why you've been crying. That's not true! 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 You know better than anybody if it's true or not. You've been regretting this from the beginning. Even if you were able to hide the corpses without getting caught, you could never have washed the blood off your hands. How are you going to fool yourself into believing you won't have to live the rest of your life bearing the burden of your sin? There's only one way to do that. You have to believe that this was the only choice. That means you have to live your life denying your friends and denying that your friends are worth asking for help. Are we worth nothing to you, Rena? Of course not! You always believed that friends exist to help each other. Your friends are, were immature last year. That's why you couldn't help Satoshi from his unfortunate fate. But people grow up. We don't make the same mistake twice. We don't want to regret the same thing twice. So, believe me. We're your friends. We're on your side. Your friends are your power. <laughs> so what you're saying is that I was immature too, right? Yeah, I am. You were immature because you couldn't believe that your friends grew up. But I'm not going to blame you for that. We didn't notice until today that you've been going through such a hard time all alone. People can communicate their feelings only by talking to others. So there was nothing we could do, because we didn't talk. In that sense, it's hard to say it, but we have to admit that this was meant to happen today in order to make your choice the best one for real. We finally talked about our feelings. We now know that you've been distrusting your friends since last year, and that everybody regretted both what they did and didn't do. So now, we finally become true friends! Finally. But it's too late. We only notice our sins after it's too late. That's not necessarily true. For example, as your friend, I can understand the, fe the things you've done this time. What do you mean... by that? I understand that depriving people of their lives is an unforgivable crime, but I also understand that my friend, Zena, had no other choice but to do this. So, I don't think you're filthy, and I'm not scared of you. If something like this happens again, we should talk, a talk and think about what we can do together. But this already happened, and I understand that. When I say un I understand, I mean I forgive you. I don't hate you for what you did. I said that to everybody this time. I said it to all of my friends. I accept what Rena did. I accept that she had no choice other than to do this, and that this was her last resort after thinking it through many times. So, I'm going to side with her. Kitchen. Of course, if she killed them for money or some other stupid reason, I'd drag her to the police. But that wasn't why Rena did this. She couldn't run away, and she thought it through before she came to this point. If she's guilty of anything, she's only guilty for not talking about this about it beforehand. But I forgive her for that too. I forgive her for coming to this point. Katie. So, I beg you all, please forgive me for not noticing Grana's situation and letting her go through it alone. My sin is that I allowed a day like this today to come to pass. Katie, son. We're the only ones who know about these bags. If we keep it to ourselves, everything will be fine. Rena doesn't have to worry about a thing. Let's hide them somewhere like she planned. We'll cleanse ourselves with salt later, and that's it. Let's forgive each other for our sins. And then we'll regain our happy and peaceful lives. This is it, right? Rena, this is the future you chose. Right? This is the best possible choice, right? Kichikun. I jumped on the hood of the abandoned car Rena was standing on, and reached for her hands. Admit it! This is the world you wanted! This is the choice you wanted to make! But this is something that you can't choose by yourself. All of us have to reach for each other's hands so that Rena can make the choice! In other words, I can't make it happen by myself. I need everybody to reach for every each other's hands! So Rena, you need to do it too! When all of us hold hands together, that's when you can go to the world that exists beyond the choice you made! 
Kitty-kun, I appreciate it, if you really mean it. But... but... I'm not sure if that's what everybody else wants. A little hand touched mine. It was Rika-chan. Rika-chan! Nana, you aren't filthy. You didn't give up. You seized your fate, even though you had to dirty your hands to do it. I have no reason to accept you. Rika-chan's small hand was strong, and she spoke eloquently. I know how comfortable it feels to be stained by disappointment at everything in this world, after getting lost in a maze of misfortune. That's why I can understand how strong you are, and how hard you fought, alone, without giving up. I'm proud of having you in my life. I agree with Katie. I believe I forgive you for your sin. So please, forgive me for mine, too. Rikacha. You remember Zumi Horoboshi now? Yeah. I'm I'm vaguely remembering it. I don't remember how it ends, which is an issue. <laughs> Nothing like a bond of friendship so strong that said friends would go along with helping you get away with murder, right? You know, they're they're in twelve pieces, there's like, you know, everybody takes like two bags, right? No, there's five friends, right? Yeah. So, you know, some somebody's gonna get an extra bag or two. <laughs> I'm just a little girl without any power, but I could have fought. I'll not give up on my fate. I'll fight like you did. So, I ask you to s accept me as your friend. Rika Chen usually acts selfish, but now she was like a totally different person. She meant every word she was saying. And then, another little hand reached out to ours. <laughs> now I'm getting Tomi vibes from Junji Ito from, from you saying that. What? <laughs> Oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't- I don't know. I don't remember which one that was specifically. Satoko. Satoko put her hand over mine and Rika-chan's. She didn't say anything, looking down for a while. Rika-chan urged her to speak. Rika and I... both lost our parents. We never cried about it, however. Because we have you. A family. Made of friends. I want us to continue to be a family for you. It's natural to get it all out and express everything your family... Er, confess everything to your family because, well, they're your family. So, I think today was a great opportunity for us. I appreciate that we had the chance to forgive each other for our sins. A family made of friends. Sadko, I like that. I forgive you for your sin, Rienna-san. Please, forgive me for mine, too. A big hand reached out for ours. It was Mion's. I always thought it was my job as the leader of this club to talk about the importance of friends. So, I guess I'm not that good of a leader after all, huh? <laughs> Mion. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of you. Mion still smiled and scratched her head. Dana. I'm ashamed of myself, as your friend, and as the club president, for not being able to notice what you've been through. I'd like you to forgive me for that. Of course, I always, I also forgive you for not telling us about it. You could have, you couldn't tell me because I wasn't good enough for you. I thought I was trying to be a good leader for you, but I guess I wasn't doing my job. It's my fault. So, I forgive you for your sin, Rena. Rena, now you have all of our hands. We're all ready for you. It's your turn! Reach out for us! Come to us! This is the world you wanted! You have all of our hands right here for you to reach! So, don't hesitate! The murderer? I'll get you guys into trouble. Rena, we are... rika you don't need to say anything. We're all reaching out for your hand. What else do we need to say or prove? Rena, you don't need to say anything. All you need to do is reach out for us. Uh. Come on, Rena. This is real. It's not too late. You still have choices you can make. So choose. You can still make it. Come on. It's not too late to start over again. Rena slowly reached out. And her hand touched ours. She didn't t hold our hands. All she needed to do was to touch our hands to show us her will. Rena chose to live, to share her life with her friends, rather than refuse them for the rest of her life. 
I took a step closer to her and firmly grabbed her wrist. And all these kids are so extra, specifically Keiji. <laughs> Keiji is just extremely extra. I mean, I guess Mion is too, but you know. <laughs> it was getting dark and some stars had appeared in the sky. We all forgave each other for our sins for the first time. And it was a little embarrassing, but Nana's tears made us all cry, and we just kept crying together. We stood in a circle, holding each other by the shoulder and putting our heads together in the middle. We were a family made of friends. We forgave each other, and we were happy together. There's a memory at the back of my mind, but it's not supposed to exist. I tried to save one of my friends in that world. In order to do that, I rejected all my other friends. I acted recklessly alone and I brought about the end of the world. The situation we had here is the same as the incident in that faraway world, in the sense that people had been deprived of their lives in order to save one friend of mine. But other than that, it was different. We have Rena, Neon, Satoko, Rikichan, and myself. Nobody was missing. We were going to regain them. We were going to regain those happy and peaceful days. The road going there might be a little tough, but we'll walk it together. We all will. Man. Oh, oh, it's still going. I thought it was taking a little break. <laughs> okay. We went to the place in the mountains of Yagoichi that Rana had picked for burying the bags. Carrying corpses is a scary thing to do, but it made us united more strongly because of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, friends, friends bury bodies for each other. Remember that. <laughs> Since each part of the corpse is, is in a separate plastic bag, we can tell what's inside of each bag by touching it. First, we forced ourselves to laugh whenever we had to touch the bodies, because we were scared. But after a while, we got used to it, to the point where we could make jokes about it. Of course, all of that was probably a bluff, but we all tried our best. Mion somehow had detailed knowledge of how to hide corpses, and she told me how to dig the hole deeper. Or to do that. Rikichan helped me carry the bags. Setako used her talent of setting traps to perfectly camouflage the place where we buried the bags. Me? I was in charge of digging the hole. Rana dug it earlier, but I made it a little deeper. After we finished all that, we walked back to the place where we pa parked our bicycles, and we looked back at the place where we buried the bags. It was completely unnoticeable. We'd never been able to find the place again once we left for home. That's how perfect it looked. Great! Thank you all for your hard work. We're done here. It's time to go home. Mion said it cheerfully, as if we'd just finished club activities or something. We had no more bags to carry, and we no longer had any burden to carry either. We got on our bicycles, but Rena was still standing there, looking into the distance. Hey, Rena. What? Uh, I'm sorry. I think I caught a cold or something. I feel feverish and dizzy. <laughs> Nona's face looked slightly red. Mion touched Rena's forehead. It actually was a little warm. She had a tough day today. She had to go through so many things. She had to find a place to hide the corpses. She had to dig a hole. We caught her with the bags. We talked about our feelings. We had forgave each other. She must be exhausted after a day like that. Rena, you should rest well when you get home. Yes, thank you. I will. Rena, we forgave each other for everything, so don't blame yourself anymore, okay? <laughs> you were right about me. What, what do you mean? I couldn't fool myself. No matter how hard I tried to justify what I did, I was still scared. Look at me. I'm still shaky, even with all the help I got from you. If you hadn't found me with the corpses, if I had taken care of this alone, I wouldn't have been able to bear the burden. I'm pretty sure I would have been crushed by the pressure. She said that with a bitter smile. Yeah, then I'd just feel better and stop thinking about it and move on. Yeah, it's totally fine. Nothing, it'll be fine. This would have been so much easier for Keiichi if he consulted everyone when he disposed of Tepe during the first chapter, but he botched it royally. I mean, you know, he he kind of vaguely let Mion know, and so Mion was just like, hmm, 
I'm gonna secretly help. Because he told me in a way that he wanted it to be secret, but you know. You know. <laughs> it might take her a long time to feel from the pain, but it must be a hundred times shorter than the time it would have taken if he did all this alone. Or if she did this all alone. <laughs> I was still thinking of Keiji. Nana's home was the closest from here. Nana went her way, and the four of us were left behind. Mion made a suggestion. I think we should just forget about today. What do you think? I agree. I think that would be best for Nana-sana, too. Nana is a strong girl. If we act like nothing happened, she'll act that way, too. If you keep acting for long enough, it becomes real, right? We'll be able to forget by talk not talking about it. Our goal is to forget about it completely. I think we'll keep wondering whether or not the Day of Reckoning will come for the rest of our lives. You're probably correct. It's not going to be so easy to simply let it go. Even if I can't forget about the rest of my life, that's good by fine by me. The most important thing is to keep it in my heart forever. The most important thing is that we don't make her think about it. We nodded in agreement, just as my house came into view. Well, this is goodbye. See you at school. Just like always. Just like always. I will set a perfect trap for you, just like always. <laughs> goodbye, Keita. And everything was totally fine forever. After I parted with him, I still felt hot and dizzy. It felt really weird. I was even staggering to the front door. I felt as if I was floating on air, just like I just took some sort of strong cold medicine. And nothing went wrong, TM. <laughs> Today, something very shocking, something that made me super happy, and something very embarrassing happened to me. I felt as if... My heart and my mind were about to explode because they were filled to the brim with both happiness and sadness. I don't know whether I made a crucial mistake today, or if I had the happiest day of my life. I don't know which it is, and all I could do was stare blankly into space. I felt frustrated, too. Even though they were my friends, I was caught in the act of abandoning the corpses. But at the same time, I felt relieved that my reliable friends accepted what I did. Those emotions were all mixed up in my heart. And they were equally strong, making it difficult for me to decide what I was feeling. I was losing my sense of balance, and it was like the world was wrapping around me. I heard sounds as if I was going I was in the shower. Everything left me with a feeling of unreality. When those emotions were about to make me lose control, I felt a heat on my wrist. The part where Keitsukun grabbed me earlier started throbbing. My feelings weren't cooperating with me, but the heat of my wrist calmed me calmed the down for me. I don't know how to express what I felt when my friends and I held shoulders together in a circle earlier, but the feeling was the only thing I knew to be real. I'm home. Huh? As soon as I opened the front door, I smelled it. I smel It smelled really good. My father wasn't good at cooking, but he likes trying to cook creative dishes. I remember he used to cook something very challenging whenever he was in a good mood. So this smell was a sign that he felt that way. That's why I- that's why I always liked this smell. The reason he was in a good mood was because he found a job! And not just any job, he found a job with a company created by friends from his old workplace. They remembered my father and promised to hire him. He told me that some of his other colleagues from the old company were also working there. It must be very encouraging for him to work with people he knows, because he wasn't- he hasn't worked for a long time. The dinner looked great, in contrast to how it tasted. It was a dinner to celebrate his new life, to show his determination, to regain his bond with his daughter, and to make a clean start. I talked about a lot of things with my father that night. It had been a long time since the last time I talked with him like this. I don't remember when it was, but it reminded me of days when I was still happy, which meant that I'd finally returned to that time. My father still believes that Tepe is coming back one day. So he's still very cautious about locking the doors and windows, and he gets scared every time someone rings the doorbell. I told him so many times that they'd never come back, but I couldn't convince him, because I couldn't tell him the reason that they won't... He'll eventually realize that he's free. I'm sure it won't take too long. My heart was full of many emotions that day. 
If emotion could actually burst a heart open, it might happen to me. My brain must have been overworked because so many things happened that well, at once. Ah, uh, yeah, you was playing. Yeah, it started in um, you became a song like as of last chapter. It was like basically she owns song with how much it was playing. <laughs> but yeah, or I guess Satoshi more more like it. My head was still fuzzy, but I managed to crawl into bed. I felt like the ground was moving. I totally lost my sense of reality. I remember that I once felt like this when I got the flu. I might get a high fever tomorrow, but I don't care. I don't care if I get sick tomorrow. I just wanted to enjoy the fact that I took a step towards the future of my decision. Kichi-kun told me something like that today. The high fever and the dizziness made me feel frustrated for some reason. But whenever I felt frustrated, I felt the heat on my wrist too. I grabbed my wrist with my left hand tightly. It made the frustration go away, and it brought me relief. Even the dizziness I didn't like just just before made me feel like I was in a down-filled futon. I was falling asleep in that down-filled futon on my first night in a new world. This dizziness didn't go away for a few days, but I gradually got used to it. This new world looked like the world I used to live in before, but the sunshine was a little bit brighter and Kichi-kun's smile looked a little bit more gentle than before. We made more noise than we used to. We spent every day slowly, but in high spirits. Oh, what an idiot I am. I underestimated that dizziness, and I caught a summer cold in June. I wanted to get better as soon as possible. I should have taken a day off from club activities, but I forced myself to play with them every day, and that made it hard for me to get better. I finally learned my lesson recently. I don't need to feel frustrated. There's no limit to happiness in this world. As long as we keep wishing for it, it'll continue forever. I don't need to feel frustrated anymore because tomorrow I will have the happiness I have today. We'll have the Watanagashi Festival next Sunday. Miten tells us that we'll have a lot of fun and that we'll go extra crazy. I really can't wait. And nothing will go wrong. <laughs> We're totally not just in the middle of this chapter. Sips water bottle in panic. <laughs> Notice from the forestry service. <laughs> right, nothing will go wrong! <laughs> it's still June, yet the air is filled with the cries of the cicadas. How is everyone in Hinamizawa doing? The Watanagashi festival is coming just around the corner. We staff members from the forestry service are going to perform a wood sculpting demonstration at the festival. We'll be happy to lend out our tools and teach our kids how to sculpt wood themselves. It'll be an excellent memorial gift. Also, we would like to inform everyone that we're going to cut down trees in local hills this summer as part of the number 4th Forest Landscape Management Project. This project involves preserving the beauty of the forest by cutting down old trees and planting new ones. The Forestry Service needs volunteers who are interested in helping us cut down old trees. You can enjoy the beauty of nature under the blue sky while helping out this preservation activity. The project will begin during summer break, so you can bring your kids, too. This will be a good opportunity for your kids to learn about nature and have a valuable experience. The locations of the project are the, foot, are the forests of Takatsudo and Yagoichi areas. God, I haven't had caffeine in months, but this is making me need a Baja Blast. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right, I, man. Now I want Taco Bell, but I... Eh. I gotta wait until, like, after payday. <laughs> hmm, let's see. It's about ten minutes until the usual time I have to end. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to quite end yet. Hmm. Little bit. Little bit. It seems like a good place, spot to stop, but like, eh, I don't want, I don't want to end too early. <laughs> watch videos until the end? What kind of videos? <laughs> I got no videos to watch. <laughs> also, hello, Bailey, you showed up at the end. <laughs> Not the end of this chapter entirely, but in the spot where it's just like, hmm, we have like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> you want me to play a 10 minute game? 
Mm. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll look at it. Okay. What, what, what you sending me? <laughs> you probably... It's a five to ten minute experience. Okay, let's. <laughs> In that case, I will I will switch over to the just chatting screen for the moment. <laughs> yeah, I had the stream open the whole time, but I've been doing finals. Oh, okay, that's understandable. <laughs> the, the the man man. <laughs> Monkey, what is this? <laughs> the last two weeks has been super busy. Oh yeah, I I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. It's a it's a browser game and everything. Oh no. Okay. We w <laughs> made this a silly joke. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do we'll do this for you, Moki. <laughs> let me just get it all selected. <laughs> oh um, let me see. What would, uh, need to change my, my category to uh, games and demos. <laughs> games and demos, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me just adjust it. <laughs> you better not be tricking me, Moki. <laughs> like a weird aspect ratio but that's fine <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out <laughs> and then how bar okay since i don't want to end early we're playing a thing <laughs> a browser game <laughs> okay i'm okay oh needed to do a little bit more adjustments the man man okay, don't don't clip no you need to <laughs> okay that's fine it's fine. It can it can look a little scuffed. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I can't believe Moki wouldn't do such a thing, would he? <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Bringing the total to fifty five combined cases of salmonella and diarrhea. Oh. Well, I guess that's why they call prom a night to remember. Oh no. For our final story, the serial killer, the man man, is still at large. Authorities warn that although he has no bones, he is still extremely deadly. If you thought I'd send you a game that would give you banned, I don't know why you would make me mod true. They urge residents to keep doors locked and windows closed at all times. I trust you, Moki. We called it the brownout. Oh no. That does it for the evening news. Back to your regular programming. Of. Now that's what I call weird music to sleep to. Volume 25. Bonum, bonum. Mono, bono, oh no, oh no, the window, oh no, I have, I have buttons. Um, oh, oh hello? Um, <laughs> just wiggle out of here. <laughs> cause, cause why not? <laughs> oh gosh, get the knife, where's the I don't even know where the knife is! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and now it's the man man! <laughs> oh no, it's in the kitchen, okay. I okay, I think I figured it out. I, I figured out the I figured out the trick. <laughs> I just have to What was Oh okay. Oh I can kinda worm my way. That's not as effective as wiggling like this. Oh no, he left his TV on. He's gonna use up all the electricity. <laughs> what the hell are you doing with your pasta? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, come on. I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna crawl my way over to the knife. I'm just occasionally gyrating my hips. <laughs> it's okay. 
Okay, now we now we can crawl our little our little tootsies back as we <laughs> Oops. <laughs> let me just uh Let me just uh <laughs> Don't don't worry about it. We we got this. <laughs> we're we're moving and grooving. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I was making better progress this way. <laughs> hey, you like you like this you like what you see, Eggies? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Get, get, get back in the room. Get, get back in the room. Get back in- get back in there. Get back in there. You can do it, man-man. You can do it, man-man. We gotta kill Daryl. We gotta kill Daryl. Okay, maybe if we- we flop our- our, our legs like a fish. <laughs> you- You guys can hear me just rapidly tapping my keyboard, can't you? <laughs> At least I don't have a mechanical keyboard. Although there was this, like, one key set that I found that, like, the keys... Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! The crawling crawl! Um... Uh, oh gosh. Where are you going, crawling crawl? Get back here! Get back here! Get back here! Get back here! He... Yeah! Oh no! He's... Yeah! <laughs> Apparently I'm just gonna go back to bed. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, get get out of my way, desk! Get out of my way, desk! Get out of my way! <laughs> oh no, I think the crawling crawl is gonna get away. Yeah, crawling Carl, get over here! Get over here! Get over here! Get over here! Give me! <laughs> knife, lead me! Lead me to victory, knife! Oh gosh, oh gosh, I fell over! <laughs> Come on, come on, get over here, Carl! Get over here, Carl! You always kill my- kill my victims! How dare you! Get back here, Carl! Get back here! You can't run from me- Oh, you ran from me. <laughs> Which means you lost. No, you don't get a cool losing screen. Why would I reward you for losing? I, I'd say- I'd, I'd say try again, but can you imagine if you lost twice in a row? That would be, feel pretty- so so bad. I'm not even gonna give you a reset button. Reset buttons are for winners. Just refresh your browser. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Okay. I think we. I think we can get him this time. <laughs> we're gonna. We're gonna redo this. <laughs> Man, can you imagine anybody who was like here at the start and then like left, and then they came back and they're like, "This isn't Higurashi." <laughs> Come on. Come on, come on, we got this. You can kind of take it slow, the knife this time. Okay, we just gotta, we just gotta crawl out. And if we, and if we don't manage to do it uh, this next time, then we'll just, we'll just say crawling Carl is, is, is better than us then. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on, man, man, I believe in you. I believe in you! Okay, come on. Come on. Get you can you can get through the door. You can get through the door. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on, man man. <laughs> I was throwing it back so that way you could go forward. <laughs> Please, man man. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get your victim. Okay. Okay, we just gotta we just gotta wiggle here. This is this is not this is not the time that we necessarily need to hurry, but like we do have a timer, man, man. You get some crazy movement if you just start key smashing every key. No, it's true. Let's see. Come on, Daryl. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you, Daryl. <laughs> Just gonna triangle pose my way over to you. Come on, Daryl. It is your time to go, Daryl. I'm gonna stab your TV, Daryl. Keep leaving the TV on. You don't even pause your videos half the time. I've had it with you, Daryl. This is, this is your time to leave. Come on, Daryl. I don't. I, I 
feel like we're still not gonna get crawling Carl <laughs> with the speed that I'm going. Come on, Carl. Come out. I know you're in there. Okay. Okay, come on. Come on. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Okay, come on. Stop getting your hand stuck in the bed! <laughs> ah! Come on. Come on. Come on. My hand is stuck in the floor. My hand is stuck in the floor. My hand is stuck in the floor. <laughs> nah! My... My hand is stuck. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on! No! Nah! He is, he is speeding away. He is speeding away. He's already, he, he's, I'm not even gonna, I'm doing worse. <laughs> Come on, turn left, turn left. Oh, don't get stuck in the doorway. <laughs> man, 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 man. Yeah. Carl is is too coordinated for us. <laughs> okay, I d I did say I would I would call it uh Carl's win if we uh didn't do that in time. <laughs> but that was <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was that was that was a good slug game. <laughs> okay, so me let me see who can we raid. Oh, we haven't... We haven't raided uh, Amai for a while. We don't have too many viewers, so we'll we'll send... We'll send all the eggies over to them. There we go, they're doing a little, a little chibi art commission. I like their art a lot. <laughs> you made that game in a week? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it seems like a nice fun game jam type thing. Okay, raid message, uh... What was the main thing that happened in here? What was the main thing? <laughs> um... Trash pile raid, maybe? Crawling <laughs> car. Well, that was, that was in the last few minutes. <laughs> maybe, maybe trash pile raid. The man foiled once again. Yes. Okay. So there we go. And I'm gonna change my my category back real quick so that way when they when when they look, it'll actually show what we played for a majority of today. <laughs> that was my whole stream. <laughs> but yes, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, tomorrow we will be streaming more Higurashi around noon. Um, also, if anybody didn't see uh, the art, uh, let me let me see if I can pop it up real quick before <laughs> before the raid happens. Look at that art! Look at that art that I commissioned! <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> and then and then um uh, before, uh, maybe I can pull up the other one. Maybe no no nope I don't have the time. But I'll see you guys. Oh wait no I didn't even show up. Ah!